it should zoom across, I hope. Oh, it's not going to. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I've got no glass. Oh, yes, it's appeared. It's appeared as as a chugger is chugging. Oh, everybody's drinking. It's a... Oh, sorry. I'm always drinking. You should know that. <laughs> I'll have a sip of Pepsi to get me in mood. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Do you know, I... I'm actually broadcasting on the tabletop RPG channel because they've created I that. that come and, out. Yeah. Say again, sorry. I noticed that had come out. Yeah, and I'm not too sure because I noticed that when people are playing things like Star Trek and things like that, originally they used to do it on the D and D channel, um, but now they're not. They're doing it on tabletop RPG. So I thought I'd better go on tabletop RPG. Um, mm, channel we don't well. have a tabletop. Well, I we we all have a tabletop in front of us, don't we? That that's what I was thinking, and it is officially well, it is a sort of tabletop game, isn't it? Um, anyway, hello and welcome to this week's um, episode of um, Mithras. Mithras is a fantasy role-playing game um, based on the percentile dice system. Um, there are various disciplines of magic, um, including animists who deal with spirits. Um, thesis which are uh, deal with deities sorcerers who are the powerful magicians of the world and mystics who channel power into their bodies um, very much like the um, monks that we are very familiar with in the fancy settings there's also a lot of combat going on and various skills and if you wish to know anything more about the system then there is a series of videos um, on my um, youtube channel um, that you can go and i'm currently explaining um, each and every one of them um, so we've done the overview we've done skills magic and combat so i think next up would probably be character generation which i've sort of like left to last to try to get um so everybody read up about it no just so people because otherwise it it's it's doesn't make sense that you're putting points into skills and saying well there's two types of skills standard and professional and then mm. not have it not knowing what they are so i sort of like went backwards um on it so we left the party uh, a couple of weeks ago in a very um sticky um situation um and i'm going to give a, a brief synopsis um, of the uh, what happened in the last sort of like um, session before we start off um, today's and I've got some rule corrections and um, to put into place uh, as well because there was some um, I ruled some things incorrect um, during the game so we go put those right as well but before we start I'm going to allow the um, players an opportunity for them to say who they are who they will be playing and something about their characters and i've asked them to do it in a certain way um this week um to also include their character's greatest moment so far now many of them have lots to choose from so if there's plenty of greatest moments guys then just go for your your top one and we should know the order that we go in because we're going in the same order as along the bottom so we go straight across uh, it's uh, long shanks then it's miss uh, mr pickles then medivac and then chugga and then the glass okay so i will pass over to long shanks Hi guys, good evening. I'm Longshank CPG and tonight I'm playing the amazing character Hengist. Um, tall, hulking, heavily clad in heavy armour, sword shield, combat warrior, um, that sort of thing. Um, greatest moment currently, one of my favourites has got to be that moment when he saved Bartleby's life from being turned into a human barbecued kebab. From in the temple, in the, the I can't remember the temple's name, but that when uh, the monk's temple, where there was this big statue that started breathing fireballs at people um, and turning people into. I think that wasn't that, um, that. It was the library, wasn't it? It was, the, that's library it. It was the library of the mystics. Um, Bartleby was, at, was about to set it off, and Hengus dived in front of him, threw his shield up in front of Bartleby, and took the full fire breath of this statue, thus saving Bartleby's life. Cool, and we'll pass straight on to Mr. Um, Pickles himself. I'm Mr. Pickles uh, from the Mr. Pickles show. I also enjoyed that moment with Hengus, but it wasn't very heroic for me because I think I still caught a little bit on fire and I flailed a little bit and fell you down. You did, yes, I but, remember. 
I play Barlaby Fumus. I am our team's theist. I serve the goddess Amriel. She's the goddess of the light moon. Uh, she gives me various miracles and powers that I can call through her, such as healing, protection, um, uh, crazy sight, as, as I call it when I wave my arms around. Um, other things like lighting candles, it's wonderful. And I believe Barlaby's greatest moment would probably be, I, I want to say when, when he joined the church, but that was a terrible time because his hands were all mangled. Mm. That's why he joined the church. So I'd say his greatest moment was starting on this, this lengthy quest where we got the, uh, we were, we were in the, the, we crawled underneath the city. We went into the, the room with all the cups and eggs. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Fake eggs, getting the bracelet attached and starting to get all those crazy dreams. That, that was the greatest moment I think for, for Barlaby. That was the, um, was that the sanctuary of the Templars? Yes. 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 Uh, underground. Yeah. I remember yes. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And so we'll pass over to um, Medivac. Medivac. Um, hi, I'm Medivac and I play Hajra Khan. He's a group's tracker stroke scout. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, um, tracker and stroker. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> Um, um, he's recently joined the Brotherhood, who um, um, they watch the effects that nature has on certain mm -hmm. areas and animals, humans, and creatures as well, and record everything that happens that way. Um, really enjoying that, and really looking forward to um, reporting his findings in certain areas. Um, his greatest moment was... When he was <laughs> empty. <laughs> no. Too much of a pause there. I know. When he was alone one night. And no. Um his greatest moment was when um I, I'm gonna do it. Um was when he jumped in front of Mr. Bartleby and saved him from this. He, he, Mr. Bartleby was was, tr was stuck next to this round bowl full of this liquid that was turned yeah. into like huge tentacles were jumping out and biting him and nobody was near so so Hazra jumped in front of him pushed him out of the way and then tried to defend him while he was there and and he, he, he took so many bites and blows from these tentacles he and he just stood his ground all the way in the hope that somebody would come and help him and that's his I greatest moment <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Bartleby, there, there seems to be a lot of people jumping in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of sound like I'm helpless. But... <laughs> yeah, it's almost like all foolhardy. <laughs> it's like a crushed ass dummy. Yeah, uh, and yeah, so thank you, uh, Medivac. We will move on to um, Mr. Chugawaga. Hi, guys. I'm Chugawaga, and I play Gulliver. Um, Everybody else seems to have more of um, a clear and defined world within the party. Um, Gulliver considers himself more of a factotum, turning his skills to the, the task at hand. <laughs> uh, Sorry, so, I uh, misheard that, and I thought you said a, a fat totem. Totem. Yeah, I know now. I just... yeah. um, he's a sorcerer, so he can change and adapt his spells to suit a given situation. Um, the homebrew rules that we have in place in this particular campaign um, have all the sorcerers joining one of four orders, um, mm. each of them specialising in certain spells. Um, Gulliver's is the Blue Order, that of the Kraken, and spells that he can learn involves around communication, teleportation, and transportation. Um, so it's possible for him to cast a summon spell or a teleport spell, but he couldn't cast a banish or a bypass armor spell. Um, out of the 53 or so known sorcery spells on Odis, um, Order of the Kraken can teach Gulliver 23 of them. Um, he has certain advantages of being in the order. Um, one of them that he does get free board and lodgings, and um, he can actually advance in um, in level through through the order as well, um, gaining more proficiency. Although it does take a lot of time for him to do this, minimum of three years for him to um, go from one rank to another. So to get the rank of adept is three years of of studying. Um, 
his greatest achievement or finest moment. Now that was that was pretty hard for him. Um, was it going to be killing the snake or working out how to kill the snake witch who couldn't be killed, or killing the six-armed she-demon made of stone, or refusing to leave the den of the vipers until the starving and dying children had been rescued? Well, it's none of those. His proudest moment is being alive right here, right now, with these other people. Because everything that he's achieved, he couldn't do alone. He's always need the help and support of others. Gulliver's aging mentor, Master Healy, gave him lots of advice before he left for Odis. One thing he said was, Gully, my boy, good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you always know they're there. And as usual, Master Healy was right. And I should put them to the glass. Touching. I, do, you know, Touching. do you know, I oh, thought... Oh, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I thought Gulliver's finest moment was going to be when he took out the giant scorpion with a stone. <laughs> Well, no, because other that? people, he did take it out, but on that one, he actually, he actually followed Hengist. That was when he was, he always wanted to be like Hengist, and That's Hengist right, charged, yeah. charged it, and Gulliver didn't have anything, so he only had a dagger. So he drew his knife and gave his battle cry and charge just like Hengist did. Yeah, and tried to jump onto its back. <laughs> I remember. Which made yeah. He made his athletics roll and managed to plunge his knife into the um, scorpion's eye. Yeah, and blind it. I, I'm yeah. sure Saving you had. The process. I, I'm sure you had a stone though, a lucky stone that you chucked at something. I thought it was at the scorpion that. That was yeah, because it started to run. And yeah, I, you thought he, it, yeah. He then chucked his stone and he managed to get a. Uh, a special so he did stun location that was it yes yeah. i remember and yeah that's what i thought your um your special moment was going to be um, okay. no, my special that moment was really nice though nice. that was really I know. Nice. you know it wasn't saving anybody or no nope. standing in front of anything it's just just be it, it was like the oscars really uh, yeah <laughs> i would like to thank my mom <laughs> 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 okay, so let's get um, quickly get a synopsis of what's happening. And I'm not going to concentrate on the big um, storyline um, at the moment. I'm going to concentrate on this um, storyline. So the characters um, um, came back to Lindo and have been hired by um, Lord Drayston, who owns a small um, fife uh, out past the... Um, um, the fens in um in odess i'm just trying to get the the map up here da, da, da. it's just come up a whole load of green uh, there you are um or you, you hang on guys I'll, I'll move you on to it if you want to uh remind yourself of it um yeah so the the party sort of like um came back to lindo which is the walled um town here and then they were um asked to perform a service um for lord drayston and they traveled up to um lord drayston's fife um where they found that um his daughter um briar had been abducted by Batrachians, who are sort of like frog-like people who live in the nearby um, frog fens. And they've been, um, they haven't been um, very, um, they, they haven't been sort of like, I'll just go put you back onto the big map so I can show things. Um, they, they've been rather quiet for a, a large period of time. Um, but recently they've sort of like um, gained their um, prowess and have started to come out and started to hunt. And they raided the nearby um, farmsteads and there was some kind of festival going on or something and they abducted a whole load of people. The party were hired um, to venture into the frog fence and to, re, uh, to rescue um, a group of survivors, a group of the farmstead people, including Briar and her handmaiden, from the Braetrachians. They went into this swamp 
and they got various uh, they got attacked by a trapdoor spider um, nearly sucked down into sinking mud um, I think somebody hit um, a, a wasp's nest and got quite stung a few times and then eventually they came across the most horrific scene where they discovered that the Bretrachians were actually summoning something out um, of um, what appeared to be a black pool and they were actually staking um, the um, the hue the parts of the prisoners to the stakes and then this huge um, creature this almost like black eel creature was coming out as the the leader of the Pretrakians left lifted up what appeared to be a white marbled egg and you can see from the image there um, this um, black eel for want of a better word um just ripped one of the um villagers from the stake and um, promptly ate it and then um everybody sort of like dispersed the Bretrakians started to have a rather um uh, lavish night with drinking etc etc and they also um this allowed the party to start to um make um their way around um the um the camp um so the camp uh, looked like um this when they arrived and they went right the way around the prisoners pit here is where the um um, the party saw the handmaiden um, tried to persuade them not to take Briar into the tower above. Um, but eventually they went into this uh, forgotten outpost, this tower, which is quite strange. There's various strange things happening in here. The first thing is that it's actually sinking into the black swamp. The second thing is many of the party suddenly realised that it wasn't actually... Um, made of stone that they knew about it was different stones they also found that there was a whole load of weapons in one of the rooms I think that you found that weren't actually weapon that you knew the little spaghetti sort of like squiggles is what appears to be a whole load of vines that are sort of like um, spreading out um, from the area and eventually the the party managed to get into the central room um, um, where you can see them huddled now. Um, I think somebody went upstairs and I forget who it was, sorry, but I think the um, the um, the chief um, was in some kind of hypnotic trance because there was some sort of like um, um, mist, some kind of um, incense burning that, that actually caught, caused some um, delusional um, sort of like um, escapades um, but then um, who killed the, the... Hazra did uh, Hazra yeah sorry it's no good putting your hand up Hazra when... <laughs> I'm looking at I can't I was, I was chewing boom. nuts oh, right. yep. you were chewing your nuts that's absolutely fine no, um, I found out Chuggerwooker told me what teabagging meant today I <gasps> I thought teabagging was when you jumped up and down on somebody when they were dead. Well, yes, that's a new is. version of teabagging. <laughs> teabagging. It's what you jump up and down, putting on their face. Yeah, yeah. I never realised that. Old school teabagging was doing a little wedgie. Anyway. No. Yeah, so I was just sort of like jumping up and down on this person in Realm versus Realm saying that I was teabagging <gasps> them. Teabagging them? <laughs> so rude. Apparently it wasn't. So anyway, um, the... They um, they managed to have sort of killed the chief, and I don't think you took the egg, if I'm right. No, well, I I, I had more important concerns about saving Bartleby. <laughs> yeah, and Bartleby found a nice little black pool that he quite mm, happily went up to. Not the black pool. <laughs> yeah. oh. He went up to to take a bit out of it, some of the liquids, to do some tests on later, no doubt. Mm. However, uh, when he got there and went and put the um, glass nearby, the um, it erupted with all these little baby black eels that were coming out. And there lasted the combat that Hazra talked about beforehand when um, um, Hazra breaks bravely fought off, um, saved Bartleby, who unfortunately had passed out on the floor, I think, at that point, um, yeah. with his arm well and truly um, 
uh, incapacitated, not ripped off. Anyway, eventually the, the party, um, including Briar, as you can see, who's um, 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 the um, lady there with the um, ginger hair, um, and the token there, um, all managed to get outside. And this is where we're going to pick it up from this week. Now, I got certain things wrong last week. And we had a bit of kerfuffle about the rules at the end. So I went off and found out and I posted all the answers into Discord um, so people um, can see it. So now is the time that we're going to correct those rules. So the first thing that we were debating was whether or not the first aid could actually be taken and stabilise Bartleby um, in time for him to um, actually survive. And the ruling about that is that, yes, Yes, it would be possible um, because the blood loss um, is 1d3 or whatever times the healing rate minutes. Uh, it's not rounds, it's minutes. So I think eventually they, it was something like six um, or something like that. So it would be six rounds, um, six minutes, which of course there's, um, if I get this right, there's 10 rounds um, in a... Um, in 10 rounds in a minute because each round is six seconds long and umpteen turns in that so there was plenty of time for actually um, I think it was you Hasra to apply right. first aid and even with that um, it could actually be um, um, organized um, mm. repeated or taken minutes to actually reduce the role of it um, the interesting thing that they were saying on the reddit forum afterwards was that um, as soon as you start the first aid roll it is assumed that the the bleeding has been stabilized yeah uh, I, I i agree with that because it's like putting pressure on the room yeah. straight away yeah yeah so it's um it's a it's a case that um as long as it's been started and it's not interrupted, then even if it takes um, a few times, you know, to actually do it, it the um, it would be fine. Um, so, um, Bartleby, uh, I think, are you still unconscious, though, aren't you? I believe I am. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. Um, now, the, the other rule that I um, got wrong, um, mainly because I just read the bullet points and not the whole paragraph, was Gulliver holding his breath. Um, so what I didn't realise is that you can hold your breath for X amount of turns, I think it is, compared to um, one of your stats, I think, like, like your endurance. And only if you take a, a big, you prepare yourself for it. And I watched, I looked the video, watched the video back and Gulliver did indeed prepare and sort of like held his breath. So um, Gulliver had to make a whole load of endurance rolls, which he failed, which he wouldn't have to have taken. And that included some from um, um, combat as well, because a lot of you had to take fatigue rolls, because I noticed that we're up to round six when we left. Yeah. But some of those Gulliver would have actually succeeded in, um, or could have succeeded in if um that had gone uh big uh, if that rule had been played properly so gulliver what was your um final um what was your end um endure um not endurance fatigue rating at the end i was wearied you were wearied okay then so what will happen i watched back the um the video and sort of like took off the um i think you made fail two endurance rolls in the thing and um so what we're going to say if it's all right with you is that you are now uh, we'll reduce those two that will mean it'll be down to i'm just checking the um thing it will be down to winded now rather than wearied so you can just um adjust that um down and then that that sort of like um gets um over that now some of you um inhabited um had some um um mental willpower tests etc which now that you're outside that has been um uh, removed um ha um hengis you've got a an orange dot on you what, what was that I think that was Briar at one point before you put um, <laughs> right, got you. a token on. Uh, oh, brilliant. That's what I'm hoping. 
So we, we, we can um, get rid of that because the, the token um, is now um, on. So, yes, yeah, so um, you'll be pleased to know that um, um, Bartleby, you have actually um, stopped um, bleeding. Um, you're, you're actually um, unconscious at the present moment in time. And because of the major wound that you suffered to your arm, um, your arm can be healed. But as we know, in this sort of like um, day and age, um, it's almost like needs to be um, a priest, um, somebody um, a lot higher up um, than you. Now, one thing that I didn't do, and if anybody knows the rules, by all means, um, tell me. Um, does anybody know the rules for unconsciousness and coming back round? I should have thought about this, but I never... Um... One slap. One slap. And <laughs> it's got... Have we... Have we? Is it now that um, Bartos be, Bartleby's been stabilised? Yes, yeah, so he's now... Oh, right. he's, he's, we we, we left it and it was still in combat. Yeah. We literally dragged everybody out and we finished there. Yeah, and if you remember, um, we finished it with uh, me saying, uh, and you can go back and look at it, I said, right, let's assume for this, for the start of next time that um, Hazra has done his first aid roles and Bartleby, you are stabilised. And, and then I think, Gulliver, you were saying that that would not be possible because first aid takes a, a 1d3 minutes or something so he would be dead by then um or the arm would be useless uh, no he would be dead due to blood well, and that's that dig the grave and things yeah they? blood and shock so and that's why i did it so um really and truly you could actually take has could take minutes on and minutes he could re make an easy roll yeah, yeah. Right. and so so that's absolutely um fine um so because gulliver could probably do it in in six seconds yeah, well, what, exactly. Yeah. So, well, I think about it, if I stabilise and you try to heal. Yeah. No, you can't heal a major wound. Um, some things can heal a major wound. Yeah, n not a source of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. That's the thing. Um, right, let me just... Just let me... And uh, poor Bartleby didn't have any... Um, what should we call it on either, didn't you? you didn't, I had armour. No, you didn't have any points left, I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> you know, look points to to reduce it. Um, there's a wonderful permanent injury table, by the way, that I'm l really exhibits a gruesomely horrible scar. I just oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think something well, like that. What we can that. do is, is strap Mr. Bartleby's um, arm to his leg or something and let him go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, so um, I need to um, look up. Um, how long it would actually take to um, come round. But um, apart from that, does anybody have any questions that they want to ask or anything that they want to say before we set things yes. in motion? My abdomen is uh, very hurting and my right leg is a serious, minus one, serious? Yeah, serious wound. So you have yeah. a serious wound there. Yeah. yeah. So I will try to treat myself if possible or if anybody will treat me. Well, I think... Um, can I, I ask a question about... Yeah. Because it, it, was, it was an answer to something that I wanted um, anyway, and it was concerning the spell that I would have used on Bartleby. Yeah. Um, Stabilise him. And the, the, the spell is regeneration. And I'll, yeah. I'll just link it so you, cool. just, so you, um, just so you can see it. So I can do that touch as an intensity of eight. Um, now, it can stabilize and heal, but the heal part needs concentration and it takes hours. Yes. But for the actual stabilization, is that sort of like, would that be instantaneous or? Yes, I, I, I think... Um... Yeah, because what you do, targets regenerate a number of hit points per hour equal to the intensity of the spell. So basically, you would um, stabilise the person if they had a serious wound or less, isn't it? Because it doesn't actually... You know, uh, yeah, it cannot repair major wounds, but it yeah. can, can stabilise. So if somebody has... 
yes. take a major wound. It can it can stabilize them so yeah. that. Yeah, and if you if but, you if you go further down, it says if concentration lapses or the spell is terminated early, the amount of hit points recovered is proportional to the time spent regenerating. Yeah. So, so this. But, but Matt, the thing that I didn't know is because I wasn't actually. You can't use it to do a a major wound, so people no. go down the route of expending, con you know, concentrating on it to to heal hit points because he can't do it. No, exactly. But you would cast but, it, and it would stabilize um, the major wound. Why would you waste the your out of character? Why would you waste your magic points if you know that I'm going to first aid and stabilise them anyway? Yeah, and I think the regeneration spell is there just in case somebody doesn't have. First yeah, and aid, I mean, yeah. and and the other thing is that you could spend you could spend minutes um, trying to stabilise him, fail your roll, even though if you'd taken minutes to make it easy. Yeah, and even though he was he was classed as being stabilised where you do it, if you failed your role, that would then mean it was... Right, okay, yeah. Whereas so, whereas the, the regeneration spell has has the option of being able to be able to cast over and over again, with, and if it's a failure, it doesn't cost any, any magic yeah. points. Yeah, okay, right. so let's, let's leave rule discussion um, to Discord or something else, and let's concentrate on getting things um, underway here. So is there yes. anything that you guys want to ask or do before we set things back in motion? Um, whilst um, everybody was being healed, Hengist would have gone back into the tower and gone up to the top stairs because he wanted to try and find that egg thing. Because he remembers Gully talking okay, about then. it. So yeah, so we we will. Um, so you can. So you want to actually go back into the. Yeah, the he's going to go back into the town <laughs> to get the egg thing. Okay um, then. Well, the healing was happening. Uh, before well, we, uh, gosh, right. What I would say is, don't rush in because that thing. Can you do it? In, can you say it in character? Can you? Can you go in? Oh, in sorry, my head, my head up there. I will try. Hengis, my friend, do not rush in there right there now because we have a man down here and there are some strange creatures coming out of, like, um, an altar as you go in there. So just just wait until we're all ready and then we, perhaps if you get into trouble when you go back up, we can support you. Gulliver, is the door open by you or closed? Um, I believe it's still open. Okay, because, could you make uh, a perception roll for I me? I don't think anybody said about... And Bartleby, um, how many um, points um, of damage did you sustain in the last blow, do you know, to get a serious wound? I want to say I took like five damage or something okay, after that's, Yeah, that's after fine. Armor. So you are actually unconscious for the number of minutes equal to the amount of damage sustained in the attack causing the serious wound. Um, first aid or healing skills can be used to help an unconscious victim regain consciousness, but he will not be able to rejoin any combat until he has received further healing to the serious wounded location. OK, so basically the, the first aid um, skill um, done by Hasra will yeah. actually stabilize you and bring you round. But you're actually um, you're not allowed to do anything in, in um, combat. Um, I you can't sort of like burst into combat or do anything, mainly because if you do, your wound will be ripped burst open yeah. and you're burst to seed. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So um, you actually um, hear um, Gulliver almost like a, a wet um, slapping noise, and you sort of like take a, a, a look inside the, the the tower. And you notice that um, these sort of like black eels that you saw before seem to almost like be trying to escape the container. They seem to sort of like be almost like projecting themselves out, but hit not being able to leave the blackness. Um, and so they sort of like projecting themselves out, then flapping down onto the thing and then coming back in. Does that make sense? Mm. Is there if... any moisture on the floor? 
Um, no, it seems to be that they are, uh, they look like, um, almost like rubbery snakes. Um, but you, you do notice that they never detach from the black liquid. Okay, so it looks like, um, and they're not just sort of like trying to go out in one direction. Um, they're trying to sort of like do this um, in a lot. You, you almost like think, you sort of like look at it and think, my God, if you all decided to go one way at the same time, you might get somewhere here. But there definitely seems to be something going um they, they definitely seem to be trying to escape. Um, obviously, tasting um, some um, blood has put them into some kind of a frenzy. OK, um, Gulliver's going to turn to um, Hengist and he says, are, are you thinking of going back in, Hengist? Yes, I am, Gully. We, um, we should probably try and get the, um, the orb or egg thing that the the main sorcerer seemed to have upstairs when we went in, he was holding that. And I thought we, we should get that back to stop them. I, I, I don't, I don't think the, 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 the black eel things can actually get out from what they were. I, I think they, they need maybe water or that tarry stuff to, to, to be able to, to move from one place to another. If, if you, if you keep to the, if you keep to the wall, you should be able to get up the stairs. When you when you get the egg, search him. He might have other things on him, and, and check his forearm. We'll do, Gulliver. For the we'll sign. Um, Angus is gonna sheath the sword, put his shield on his back, and he's gonna walk in, um, walking Hengist. quickly. Angus, remember to hold your breath. Taking a deep breath before he goes in, and then hugging the wall, he's gonna make his way upstairs. Okay, um, what's the um, rest of you going to be doing? So, um, Hasra, you're f you finished um, with Bartaby, and Bartaby, you're um, coming round at this point. I've put something in Discord um, for you to um, see. Um, so, yeah, so um, Gulliver and Hasra first up. What what are what's going to be your plans um, as Hasra um, Hengis goes back in? What um, so Hasra is currently injured. Yeah. How serious? How serious? Are there any? Do any of them look I think, serious? I think they're all major wounds. Um, serious. Yeah, well, my, my right leg is serious. My abdomen is zero. So that's um, that's uh, um, serious. Is that serious as well? Zero. Right? Uh, we, yeah. If a location is reduced to zero, it, think about it. If it's in positive oh. numbers, yeah, you it's, you've got it's some minor. Um, anything that is not positive with zero not being ni gotcha. neither serious. positive or negative. Yeah. So um, if a location is re re reduced to zero or less, it's Ooh. serious. And if it goes so, lower than your maximum hit points on that location, then it's yeah. major. So what you see in Hazra is his right leg has been shredded on the outside. There's blood pouring down his armour, through his, through his um, uh, quilted armour. And his abdomen is the same. There's all these gash marks and bite marks all the way across his abdomen. Um, Gulliver's going to um, say to Hazra, I, I don't think my healing magic is is up to, to helping you, Hazra. And he'll he'll go to Bartleby and see whether or not Bartleby has any... Um, what what any can you... Are, are, is it minor? Um, yeah. But why can't you? So mine, mine, mine's, mine's, um, mine, um, my, my heel mine's... is that. Oh, uh, not your regeneration. No, that takes hours. Okay, then got you. Um... Well, could he, could he help me uh, use my first aid on myself? Um, yeah, you, you can first aid yourself, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so heal, yeah. So the the cantrip or the prayer heal can only um, do uh, minor wounds. So uh, Bartleby, do you have any minor wounds at any point? Uh, no, I actually only have <laughs> my right arm is is the only thing wounded on me. Everything else is pristine. Cool. Um, okay, and, and then he's going to go. Just give you my things because it's going to take a while while Hengist is um, getting this mm. thing. Um, he will, once he's checked Hazra, he'll then check Bartleby and then he'll turn his attention to um, Briar. 
Okay, cool. Even he's already he's already tried to heal Briar, but not for not to, not her actual wound. He tried to remove the effect. Of, yeah, so you can roll your of, um, of the... roll your folk magic to um, see whether or not you can um, heal any um, wounds that um, Briar has on her. Um, Hazel, what's going to be your plan? Uh, my plan is to put a bandage around my leg and hopefully something around my abdomen. Cool. And is this just <laughs> this to stabilise rather than... Yeah, I mean, that's all, all first aid does, isn't it? Just yeah. uh, literally just stabilises. So it's just to put something there to stop it from falling out. Yeah, so you can only... Um, it re, uh, Your first aid um, returns your serious wounds to mm. partial functionality, as it That's states right. in the rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I, so, I would be ego drag my leg. Yeah, so um, just just do your um, first aid roll for me. It, it, okay. The Despite only my... the only thing I'm looking for is that if you fumble to get an automatic increase, anything else yeah. will be automatic. Uh, in this situation yeah and that's that's absolutely brilliant well done and yeah so um yeah you um briar has various um cuts and bruises on her gulliver that you managed to heal with your um magic and you notice that they seem to be more like abrasions and you know things about maybe she's fallen over or been pushed over and scraped knees or something like that where was the major wound because because she had something that was really was it a head or or yeah no. so when hengis dropped her no it was was it her abdomen or it something? was her uh, it was her abdomen oh yes i forgot about that whoops yeah. Yes, thank you. I, I honestly, I seriously had had forgotten about that one. Yeah, um, it went into her abdomen, wasn't it? And that was a major. Uh, I don't think it was a major wound. I think it was a serious wound, which you still can't. I know. Uh, yeah. Actually, um, heal up. So, um, yeah. So, and Bartleby, therefore, you you start to come round, um, sort of like favouring your right arm. That Hazra has put into some kind of a sling for you. Um, probably, you know, so it's strapped more to your body um, sort of sling rather than a hanging yep. um, str um, sling That's to try right. to... Be to, to his collarbone. <laughs> yeah, and sort of like... It's sort of like he's almost like put your arm here and sort of like wrapped bandages around it so you're sort of like quite um, secure uh, in it. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, I guess... <sighs> Pray, pray to Amriel for for answers. Why have I, why have I, how have I failed? Um, if I may, uh, devotional perhaps. Yes. Yeah. By all means. Uh, oh shoot, that's on the other page, isn't it? Um, so oh just, yeah. Yeah. So you sort of like start to um, pray quietly and and muttering incantations to. Um, and various swear words um, to Amriel um, to see why she has <laughs> forsaken you. Um, um, Hengus, you you get up um, to the the um, the the um, chief's room uh, where all the incense was, etc. And yeah, the the marble sort of like rough cut egg um, thing is it just seems to be um, he had it sort of like in between his legs, if you remember, and it's just sort of like left there. It's totally, it's not guarded or anything like that. What would you like to do with it? Um, so Hengis wants to, um, being very careful not to touch it with his bare hands. So he's going to put his backpack, take his backpack off, put it down, get his bedroll out, and then carefully pick it up with the bedroll, wrap it in that, because he doesn't know what it is, stick it in his bedroll. Um, and then he's also going to um, check both forearms of the frog person. And he's he's looking to see if he if it's got any tattoos or marks or ink or anything. No, like that. it it just seems to have rather rubbery, wrinkly um, skin. It, it looks like it's quite an old frog. Uh, apart apart from that, um, you do notice that the um, this egg um, it. Uh, as you sort of like put your um, blanket um, uh, over it and you sort of like pop it into your backpack, you do realise that it 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 looks, it feels like it's actually made out of um, solid um, marble. 
um, it seems to be roughly cut it, as you get a lot closer to it you find that it's not a perfect egg shape um, mm. but it looks like it's been um, cut from um, marble it looks more like it's been um, almost like created rather than um, naturally being um, it doesn't look like it's naturally been found like this. It definitely looks like it's going to be created. It does weigh quite a bit. I'm just trying to find um, how much it actually okay. weighs. Um, yeah, uh, what, what's your um, plan then once it's into your backpack? Um, put everything back on, pick everything back up and he wants to give a quick, he wants to have a look to see if this um, Old, old frog has got any pockets or anything on his on his dress on its on his persons and he wants to have a quick sort of like scout through those the, the, if anything useful in there. yeah the the only thing that the um the priest is is wearing is a sort of like a like a, a loin cloth okay uh, and that's that's then. about it yeah so he won't bother in that case he will start heading back down to meet up with everyone else you might have had one of those little pockets like uh, yeah. <laughs> inside well, it. I'm not yeah. checking. Like a stupid pocket. Well, um, no, do, you do, just, like you put your key in. Uh, no, it's not a stupid pocket. It's a weird pocket. Uh, yeah. isn't it? Weird pocket. A little pouch. Uh, right. Like on your swimming oh, trunks. On your jeans. Uh, like yeah. Or your swimming yeah. trunks when you used to have something to put your locker key. Oh, my key. God, yes. <laughs> oh, um, 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 Hengis, can, Hengis, can you just make for me, please, um, a hard insight roll? Um, yeah, so you, you sort of like get the egg and you, you pop it in and you um, head on down Um to the the rest of the um the party down below so hengus comes um out um at that point yeah and um, what would you like to do um just a real question um mm. the when you were covering from fatigue what what do we times it by um so if i'm 0.125 hours um so if you multiply that by um 60 that would give you it in minutes and so you're one eighth of a an hour. So you? seven and a half minutes. Yeah, seven and a half minutes. Um, but through that time, you have to be doing nothing. No, nothing. I right. mean, you you can be sat chatting, um, mm -hmm. but not casting spells or anything like that. Okay. Well, if if Hengis isn't back, then um, Gulliver wants to say, well, what, "What what what do you make of this place?" It, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like it belongs here is it, are you talking to whoever's close yeah I, I just whether whether or not you you're going to sort of like um talk I'm going to address it not not to um Briar because okay, she's yeah. conscious but um Bartleby's conscious and Hazra's conscious I don't it depends whether or not um Hengist is back from doing his. Yeah, we we can say um it, it weighs um four encumbrance um Hengist so add it on to your um, encumbrance bit. Um yeah um, but Briar is, is stirring. She doesn't look too good. She seems to have um s some kind of wound in her abdomen. It probably looks like some kind of concussion wound or some kind of impact wound. Um, she might have caught it on a uh, on the edge of a stair, uh, as, uh, as example. She, uh, for example, <laughs> uh, as she tumbled. Uh, she oh, she's she's definitely favouring it. Um, um, Gulliver and well, anybody's got who's got either healing or first aid. Uh, make a yep. roll for me. I will do. First aid. Oh. Uh, That's um, oh yeah remember nice. that your luck points are back up now guys uh, yes um yeah so um Bartaby, you you sort of like seen wounds like this before and you you uh, you've seen that it's you can see that her sort of like her abdomen just down her, the side is quite um bruised and it, it you've you've seen things like this before that um from like um 
battles and bumps and things like this and the major um, issue about it is um, you know is internal bleeding that you know hemorrhaging inside that you can't actually see but the damage is often a lot more severe on the inside rather than the outside in your humble opinion it's often better when there's a bone sticking out or blood pouring out that's often a lot better than you know not seeing anything at all like a like you might have a bump on the head or something like that um hengis is back now yeah did i receive any guidance from amriel during my no. praying or she nothing she seems um very um quiet um all together it's mm. almost as if it's almost as if you're um disconnected from her well, that's upsetting. Have I have I done wrong? Marley's just going to be mumbling to himself. Um, Gulliver, can you make me uh, a willpower roll for me, please? I take it I didn't get any response from anybody. I don't think anybody. I was really getting a question. Sorry, thing. right? Well, I I would have, I would have quite happily said, um, to to be fair, Gulliver. These these ruins here, this this building here, seems a lot older than these these Petrakians are. Um, it seems like they possibly must have moved into this area and made it their own, and perhaps found something here that I, I don't know that maybe helped them. There seems a lot of strange equipment. If you remember in the in the first rooms, there were strange things on the walls and and and, and controlled things and pulley things that we dare not touch. So yes, I think I think this thing has been here before they even came here. I, I didn't go into any of the rooms. House. What else was there? Oh, was sorry. There I thought no, you didn't come into the might, rooms, did you? You, you were you were outside. Been, who might have been here before? I don't know who was here before. I'm not. I'm not that. I I I don't know. This there was strange equipment in there. That's all I can say. If you wish to. Uh, if you wish to spend a couple of minutes going back and maybe having a look, it seems quiet enough at the moment, and we can we can rest here while you go have a look. Just stay away from the one down the bottom with the snakes in. Um, um, Chuck, uh, um, sorry, Gulliver, I've um, typed the uh, answer for your willpower check into Discord. Does that make sense? When you say the first one as a percentage, would that be ten? Yeah. Well, what? no. Because um... it goes in. So my, it goes on the um, the power of your invocation. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's it sort of like a, that... a tenth of that as a percentile. Yeah. It means that if it was cast the that would be 100 right thank you yeah so it's yeah okay it's does fine. that make sense mm -hmm. yeah okay so as um hengis gets back um he's going to say to he's going to turn to he's going to be looking at gully but he's addressing everyone and says i have i have the the frog wizards orb thing um there was no other signs of tattoos or anything like that that's like um that we've come across before we should probably be moving soon it's not a good idea to stay here too long. Perhaps we should move out to the back of the tower and, and rest up there, and make our decision of what to do next. Can you... Did you touch it? No, I didn't. I was careful not to. After seeing what happened to Hazra a while ago, I didn't know if it was the same thing or not. <laughs> did it... Did it talk to you? Not that I... No. And you didn't touch it. I definitely didn't touch it. I picked it up using my uh, my sleeping blanket blankets. You best give it to me, Angus. Angus will um, um, take his backpack off and pass it over and says, "Have you got something to wrap it in?" Ooh, yes. it's heavy. Sure. Fair, fairly, it's it. It feels like a, a lump of just a lump of stone. Yeah. So the the marble egg weighs four encumbrance. 
just 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 put it, on, put, put, put it on the put it on the floor hengist and, and, and unwrap it so hengist will hengist, do, do it do it carefully so hengist will very carefully pick up his blankets and then unfold it to reveal this marble egg thing which is slightly not egg shaped mm. um gulliver can you make a, a insight roll for me please Can I observe it for seven and a half minutes first? Um, you can do, then roll an insight well. I'm quite happy for seven and a half. I use a point of luck and reverse it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you um, notice that as um, um, Hengis sort of like pulls it over open, um, as you sort of like look at it, you notice that it's not as plain as what you originally thought it looked. It does look like um, marble, but it's definitely got some kind of runes um, etched um, into it. Um, you, you've actually seen these runes before and you thought, right, think for a while. Uh, you're trying to piece together and then you remember that you saw them um, in a book that you read about the Chaos Mother um, when you were back in, um, oh, it's the word's gone from my head, the... Viper Den. Yes. No, no, uh, no. Um, Fordyce. Um, Fordyce. In um, the... Adrian. Thorsten. Yes, was it? The, no, Ailes... Aylesford. A Aylesford, yeah, the, the, you because you, you read... Yes. Um, in the, the church. from the church yeah that's it and you you suddenly sort of like remember that this is where you seen these runes and beforehand when you read the book you didn't think much of them they just look like runes that you didn't know but it's only when you actually start looking at them um the other thing that you notice gulliver and only you see this is that there's almost like you know like a heat shimmer um mm emanating just round it and you you can sense that this whatever it is is from the data i gave you before is quite powerful and you, you, he wants to sort of like get on he's on all fours as he's looking at looking at it closely and seeing the runes and then he, he's sort of like going to turn his head to one side and sort of like put his ear close to the actual stone without actually putting it on it to see whether or not he can he can hear anything mm. from it. it and it's interesting where as you get closer and closer you sort of like start to hear it's almost like whispering or they don't sound like words but they almost like it almost like sounds like chanting from within the stone and it's not you can't recognize anything and it's almost like in a whisper and but as you get do get your head closer to it you do find you able to resist at this point but you do have this almost like this desire to almost like make contact with it it is almost as if it has some kind of um, power, uh, some kind of uh, almost like persuasive power. And just to let you know, um, you sort of like look round and sort of like questioning at people and everybody else is this st still sort of like um, sat there, you know, looking around or healing wounds or um, cleaning weapons. And it appears that only you can actually... Um, hear this and you know every time you just sort of like go back again and as you go back again you just sort of like hear as if it's almost like trying to communicate to you but it's definitely not out loud it's definitely some form of um telecommunication or telepathy or empathic um, transmission, or something like that. The the sound is not um, out loud. 
what do you what do you reckon then, Gully? Do you think it's anything important to do with the other thing you're carrying? No, it's it's nothing to do with the seeds. It's it's definitely something evil. I will. I'll if continue closer, to carry it then. If, if you look closely, you can see runes on it. And make make a, both, a perception. Both be, have both seen these runes. Pengus, do you want to have a look at the runes? Angus will, because he stood over the shoulder of Bart Bart's yeah. shoulder when he what when okay. Bart's yeah. Angus, Brilliant. Don't get too close to it. So so make I make a, not so make a perception roll for me, please. Yeah, no, you can't um see anything at all. It just looks like a normal um marble broken marble thing. I I, I don't see anything, Gulliver. I just see I just see a marble a slightly odd shaped marbled egg. Um, I'll continue. If you think it's evil, I'll continue to carry it for the moment. And he's, he, he, Hengis will, at that point, will start wrapping it up again carefully. I'm, I'm just... Bartaby, the, the, the text, the, the legend of the Chaos Mother. Uh, so, Can you remember well, anything of it? The the what, Gulliver? The the legend of the chaos mother. The the text that you gave me. Yes. What what, what can you remember about it? Oh, um. I guess it did have something to do with those those marbles, didn't it? Uh, would Barleyby be able to roll a uh, um? history perhaps or i think i might still have the book in my inventory unless gulliver has it it depends whether or not you would like to start getting the book out when you're sat in the middle of a a complex like this to start crossing more that i i just i don't have the proper number of arms to be handling <laughs> that uh maybe, maybe a lore history perhaps what do you want um law history about i'm i'm not exactly sure because barleby is more wondering uh, why he's not getting a connection to his goddess than than uh, m much about this egg but turning his attention to the egg um what purpose did it serve within the text of the chaos mothers um, plans? There, there was no there, there was no um mention of an egg in the the text gulliver and barsby oh. you both know that what the similarities between the two are the runes um, oh. So you sort of like maybe saw them on a on a, a pictogram of something, you know, and they were there, or it might have been like an illuminated letter at the start of a paragraph. It was there, and this is where the similarity um, has come from. Not actual text, not saying this is the wound, but you just you both Bartleby and Gulliver remember seeing the same sort of runes, and the reason you do that is because runes are not used in our in Odess at all you know um there's not sort of like that power like rune quest magic or anything like that in Odess anymore um at all what what's the size of this egg thing it's about this big all right uh, it weighs four and so if you remember the Bretrachian leader was holding it up in two hands above his um, head right. mm. um, when the the big thing, the big eel came out of the black water. The other of us going to, as he sees Hengis wrapping it up, he's going to say, I, I think it's best if I keep it, Hengis. We, we, I... we, may, we may need it late, late, later on. If you're sure, Gulliver. And then Hengis will... Or once it's carefully wrapped up, he'll hand it over to Gulliver. And Gulliver, whereabouts are you going to put it? A backpack can weigh um, carry twenty encumbrance items, I think. Yeah, I'm just seeing what I've already got in my in my backpack. Um, I, I should be all right, actually. I'm currently in my pack. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine 
So yeah, that'll put me to 13 and it won't put me encumbered. Oh, cool. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, so you sort of like transfer and Henge sort of like wraps it up very carefully and gives it to you, um, Gulliver, and you sort of like gently um, um, place it um, into your um, backpack. And or, or just as you sort of like slide it in, um, and it's only for a moment, it's as if part of the um, cloth, almost like on purpose, drops away. And you um, make the slightest bit of contact um, with the marble egg. It's nothing major. It's all just like a, a slight touch past it. And um, Hazra and Bartleby and Hengis, you, when it happens, and it's only for a split second, you just see Gulliver just sort of stare straight ahead for a moment as if he's looking somewhere else and Gulliver what you feel and you almost feel that you touch um, another mind uh, another soul and for a split second and, and it really is a split second before you snap back um, you you feel um, almost like something else is in there. And it's not sort of like, it can't be cracked open, but it's definitely that it's something in there and it was trying to almost like make connection with you. Um, the, the other thing that you see, I'm going to pop in Discord for you. Gulliver's going to say, He's going to turn to the others and he's going to say, why do you think they took Bria to the to the tower? Um, to, be fair, to be fair, my friend, these, these are questions we should be asking when we are away from here. I think we, we have completed our mission that we've been sent for. And the longer we stay here, I, the more I thought, danger we're I, I thought one of our missions was to, was to find out what's happening in the... In, in in this in the swamp and what why all of a sudden all the the frogmen and our, our, our mission is also to 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 get Bria's handmaiden as well and we we know where she is she's she's in the middle of the camp that's but right first i think that's we need to get out of the tower and then we can reassess our exactly from a place of safety because at the moment they could come back or come to talk to the grand wizard this is right. at any moment We've already pushed our lot too far. I agree with Hengist here. Everybody is stabilised as far as I can see, or as far as I can tell. So if we move back the way we came, then we can assess the situation and hopefully from that point make other plans to come back in again. But at, at the moment we're in a, a, a disadvantaged position. I, I just think that we should act now when, when, they're, when they're still under the influence of whatever they were smoking. We, we don't know how long it's going to last. So, so define acts, please, Gulliver. <laughs> what, what are you wanting us to do? Alas, what are you, poor what are you suggesting us to do? Do you I want us to, to go out there and slit the throats of every baby tracheum we find? I believe what Gulliver is suggesting is that we go and take this opportunity to rescue the prisoners out of the prisoners' pit. Well, we, we, we know that everybody I, I, in, the, in, in the huts are, are, are probably under the influence of, of that, whatever that weed that they were that they were gathering and, and lighting and, and smoking. We, we know that there's probably only one guard guarding the, the prisoner hut. We, we could maybe maybe get to the entrance and and af after a, a few minutes rest, I, I could probably I could probably summon it and you could maybe kill it in quickly. That was my next question. If, we, if we're going to do this, then you would need to bring the guard to us and then we would need to dispatch him quickly as fast as possible. But you would need to, it would be a one time only thing we could do because if, if we fail at this, then we would have the whole encampment upon us. The, the, and I am in no the, fit state to be the doing a drone like the, fight. Of the guard would, I, 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 could, I, I could do no problem. It's whether or not you and Hengist could dispatch him. I would like to think myself and Hengist, who is a, a very capable warrior would be able to dispatch this, this creature. 
I agree. Perhaps we should take this opportunity to go out of the front doors because that's what they'd be least expecting and it's the quickest, from memory, it's the quickest way to the prisoner's pit as well. That is right. If we if we need to do it, we need to be doing it now rather than sat here discussing what was this, what would it do. We need to be moving, we need to be getting out of here because the longer we sit here discussing things that, that do not help us in our current situation, the, the, the more chance there is of somebody coming here to look for the, the, the chieftain of this camp and we could be discovered and at which point we will die. Well, well you've, you've led us since we've been in the tower so far, Hazra, and... Oh, um, but whatever, whatever you think. Bartleby can actually, um, you, you can move on your own, but your your actual movement rate is is reduced somewhat. Um, Briar um, probably will not be able to move um, unaided. Hengist will be carrying her. Um, I'm going to fight Hengist if you can. It, it's it's not <laughs> probably a good idea to carry her. Um, uh, it's more probably to support her. Um, okay. and the uh, the only way you could carry her is like almost like a baby. But Bartleby sort of like uh, and you has to sort of like recognise that that would actually mean that her abdomen is that's right yeah. folded folded and which is bad for her. Uh, yeah, she kept straight. Uh, yeah, so it's more a case of maybe we need to make a stretcher uh, or a, a st- bed from one of the bed. The, if we get a bed from. The, if we get a bed from one of the um, from one of these buildings here, if there is a bed, we can perhaps make it into a litter. But that is not going to help us. If we're going to put her on a litter, we need to be leaving and putting her somewhere safe, and then perhaps coming back. If we are going to attack this place, we need to put her somewhere safe, and then rescue the prisoners. So, if you want to, if we want to rescue the prisoners, we need to put her in one of these buildings. With Pass Bartleby to to watch over her in, in his capacity, and then you, Gulliver, Hengist, and I will go to the main gates here. You will do your magical thing where you you bring, <laughs> you bring the creature to us, and we will dispatch it, and then we will me Hengist and I. We'll, we will we'll go through the camp and free the prisoners as quietly as we can to this point here. And then hopefully we shall go back out the way we came in with the prisoners who will hopefully be able to help us carry Bria on the litter. Does that sound sensible? Am I, am I, am I talking? Please tell me, help me. <laughs> help me if you can. Help <laughs> <me>. <laughs> I, th- I think at the moment this is the only plan we've got and speed is of the essence. I'm happy to continue with all, it's, all it's, those lines. It's the only plan we've got because I'm the only person seeing it. If you have a <laughs> plan, please just help me. Uh, uh, input as quick as we can, please. Input. Mr. Gulliver, do you have any ideas we, what we could do? Well, I, I think it's obvious that, that we, we have we have one of two choices. We, we either take Bria... And 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 head back to um to Lord Drayston. Yes, with, which is with, my idea. With his with his daughter and and we, we leave everybody else here. Yes. And, and try to make as 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 quick time as possible before they, they come out of the their slumber. Or we, we try to rescue the other people first. I'm in favour of rescuing the other people first because if any of them could then potentially fight, we could use the, the weapons in one of the, the huts to to arm them and then perhaps the, um, the frogmen will be to intimidate my, the attackers. My, my concern is we are paid to rescue the, 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 the daughter, the Bria. And at this point, and I, I sound very callous by saying this, but at this point, nobody else matters although they do. Consciously, I understand what you're saying. They are human beings. They are here. They are trapped by these Batrakians. But our main priority is to save the girl. But I understand what everybody is saying. We, I, I don't want to be in a situation where we have saved the woman and we have a chance of getting her to safety, but then we jeopardize that by disturbing the camp 
and then we are stuck in this godforsaken place fighting our way because I am in no condition for a long standing fight. Right. So we either get the prisoners, we need to make a decision, we need to be to be solid and as one unit together we need to do this as one. We either get the prisoners, we put Mr. Bartleby and Bria in a room somewhere safe where they can be locked up in safety and we do this ourselves and bring the prisoners back to here and then we go out the back way or we take Bria and Bartleby back the way we came, which will be hard because she needs to be on a litter. Mr. Bartleby cannot help, there'll be three of us carrying her. But but uh, I might be able to exhort my goddess to to fix her messed up abdomen. Perhaps you could try. I'm I'm not leaving here without the prisoners unless that can be absolutely helped. So perhaps you could try doing that whilst if that's we, this, if whilst that's we this, getting them, Bartleby. Um, so, question for Inwills: Does Bartleby or is he capable of trying to exhort a miracle in his current state? But he died. I think he has. Okay, I'm muted, muted, but you're not muted here. Oh, Oh. sorry. Yeah, um, you could try it. Um, It won't be easy (sighs) because you're not. Yeah, you're not a hundred percent. Hey, not a hundred percent. Nothing this world is. I'm gonna try and exhort my goddess to uh, heal wound on um, the abdomen of Bria. Okay, cool, go for it. Uh, big money, probably gonna need to use luck. Um, this, this is actually a hard roll for you. Could I re-roll it with a point of luck? You certainly can, if you wish. Big money. Not big money. Uh, no. Dang it. You, you actually, um, from the th- previous thing that I put in Discord to you and th- this feeling that you're almost like been um somehow disconnected the the power of um amriel is not actually doesn't seem to be flowing through you um as before you feel a slight touch of it but you don't have that euphoria as it normally passes um through you it's as if almost like within this confine of this tower or in the place that you are at the moment or it seems, or even maybe because you are near to the egg, it seems that there seems to be some kind of um, something stopping the grace of your deity sort of like coming towards you. I'm sorry, my friends. I, I'm i not going to be able to do this today. Don't worry about it, B. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad somebody said something. <laughs> <laughs> and you failed us. <laughs> Somebody we jumps in front of Bartleby. <laughs> Briar jumps in front of you. <laughs> crawls. <laughs> okay, guys. So, what was right. the plan then? Right, Mr. Bartleby. If, like I say, if you can spend, I, I'm not leaving Hengist behind because he's he is dead set on rescuing these prisoners, and I will never leave him behind. So, if we. If we put you, Mr. Bartleby, and Bria into a building to the top of the maybe number 11. Um, on the so, map. Yeah, so just to remind you, um, number 11 was the one that had a three metre long table in that That's seemed right. to have uh, been equipped with some kind of levers and gears on it. Yeah, there are lockers on the wall in it as well. Yeah, oh. mm-hmm. metal cabinets. That's right. Yeah. You didn't look inside the metal metal cabinets, no. but that's what it was. Yeah. No, because we were we were getting through this as quick as possible. Mm. I remember. Yes. Maybe uh, I'll right. look through some cabinets then while I'm hanging out with Bria. So yeah. is it so um Bartby and, and Bria is going to go into here then? Is this the mm-hmm. the this the, the plan? Yeah, okay. Um, I, I need I need input off everybody else rather than me just going gung ho because if people don't agree then say something okay so Bartleby are you, are you happy for is that what you and Bree are going to do you're going to get cosy on the <laughs> lever and gear 
table. Yeah. I, I might open up some cabinets too, casually, but uh, nothing okay, too strange. Yeah. Hang up. I say, gee, 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 gee. <laughs> I'm not okay. going to offend my goddess even more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Um, are, the th- are, you, are, you, are you still able to revoke the power of your goddess? Oh. I don't know, Gulliver. I may have. I may have a shame brought shame upon her with my cowardice and praying for my own protection. I, I, I was I was just thinking that it's important that we kill this guard as 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 quick as possible. And I, I know you you have the ability to to increase the power of both Hengist's and uh, Hazra's weapon. It it could could mean the difference between us succeeding and failing if if they had that extra sharpness to their blades it's it's kind of hard to hear you over all that ringing gulliver but uh pray for the light of amriel on the blades of those that need sharpened i think i could probably handle that who knows gulliver um whose um weapon are you doing first um do hangus first okay i'll do hangus first okay then um of course it's this and Roll number one. Yeah, that, this is um, like a minor prayer, and that that seems to um, come off um, no um, problem um, at all. Um, it just seems to sort of like emanate quite quite easily, and that's absolutely fine. I'm just put. Um, is it blade sharp that we put on? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. And then for Hengist and his spear. Yeah, cool. uh, here Ooh. is my roll. Thank you, Hazard Spear. He does now. Oh, wait. Oh, no, uh, Hazard Spear. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. my confused. So, yeah, so that, Why, that, that comes off um, at, as well. Um, so, you just need to reduce your uh, magic points by the appropriate um, amount. Yeah. Um, do you want to cast anything on um, Gulliver at all? <sighs> I don't think he needs calm right now, but um, I I don't think he looks like he needs the fixer upper. Okay, cool. So um, Bartleby and um, Briar sort of like head off. Uh, you accompany them um, to the the room where you deposit them, and then um, Gulliver, Hazra, and Hengis. What what's going to be your plan now? Um, uh, okay. Angus's idea was um, for to check with Gulliver where he can get line of sight. Ideally, he was thinking within as close to the gates as main gates as possible, um, and then stand I, with Hazra and himself standing either side, and then transport. Hope, ask Gulliver to transport. Gulliver, can you transport the the Frogman between Hazra and I so we can attack him from two sides at once? From here. I'm, I'm not. I'm not very good at tactics, but I, I, I can position. As long as I can see him, I can position him in on a piece of ground. And if if you tell me where you want him to to be at the best advantage for you to get the 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 best attacking and and the most damage, I I can I can put him I can put him there. If you can put him between us, then we but can attack him from two sides. I drop the spell. He he he'll go back. I know, and then I'll be running towards even if he's, even if he's dead. And I'll be moving towards the prisoner pit at that point. Well, what, what I would suggest is to not drop the spell. Even if we kill him, to not drop the spell until we are moving at least halfway across. Because you, you need to stay here, Gulliver, just in case you need to bring one of us back quickly if we are in trouble. Yeah, I mean, one of you back, when I drop the spell, you'll go back to where you were. That's fine. So bring, bring, bring Angus back, and when he disappears, I will run back to you, and you will, he will... Cause diversion. No. Um, just, okay. So yeah. the the plan is therefore. Um, I think I'm right in this. And so deliver what needs to get line of sight, which on. you can probably um, do. The the guard's not sort of like standing still, so he's sort of like walking around. Mm-hmm. So probably when he gets to the place that I've actually put him now, you'll be mm-hmm. able to see line of sight of him, and you could probably teleport him um, in between. Um, Hasra and Hengis, is that the, the plan? Well, the, yeah, as long as you film, you stab each other. Yeah, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the plan was, I mean, I, I don't know, Gulliver doesn't know a lot about combat, but whether or not they can get certain advantages from attacking from the side or whatever, so that's where Gulliver wants to 
he wants to position them to, to where they're wherever they say mm. so that they yeah okay cool um so um can you can you three um just roll your initiative so i know um because obviously we'll wait till we'll do it on your um your start um gulliver but then once they're teleported in then it'll be straight into initiative or if the spell fails for some reason then you know it, things will be going from there so if you guys can roll uh initiative don't forget to click on your um your character as well um just just so you know um bartaby um while you are in the um it says bully wog but don't worry about it um just while you're in the um room you do open i think you mentioned that you wanted to open some of the the cabinets and yes. um do you have a healing skill i just do have a skill. liquid yeah um so you sort of like open some of the metal cabinets and you, you think it's quite strange that these are metal cabinets because this is nothing that you've seen um, at all. You know, cabinets in your, in Odess is no, are normally wooden. Um, but I mean, sometimes they're stone with wooden doors, but these are solid metal cabinets around the walls. And when you actually open them up, uh, remember there's this three meter long table that seems to have some kind of levers and gears on it and now that you're in here with some kind of light source <clears throat> you do notice that a lot of the the metal in here is actually rusted as if it hasn't been used for a long period of time um, but as you look um, into the cupboards the cabinets you notice that um, they seem to be full of what can only be described as medical instruments you know you've seen some things like this for um sawing off limbs um breaking bones open resetting them holding things in place various scalpels but although you recognize the implements what you don't recognize at all is the holding mechanism so normally say for example a scalpel would have a blade on one end and then sort of like a, like a shaft that you could hold on to however this seems to have some kind of curve uh, some kind of ripple on it with little things sprouting out on it uh, as if it's some kind of almost like inhuman hand or appendage and uh, will actually hold it and you sort of like pick one up and try to fit your art hand around it and you know you can do it it seems that whatever did hold this was probably bigger than your hand and no matter you can probably squeeze your mangled fingers of your left hand into it in places <laughs> but really and truly it doesn't seem to work with your hand and your fingers or anything like that it really whatever it is it's completely um alien to you um right let's um zip down could here you, um, could you change the scale on the, on uh, the yes button? sorry yeah uh is it it's in feet at the moment oh yeah sorry yeah got yeah oh one second okay that should be um right now yeah 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 Okay then, um, so um, combat will start therefore um, with Gulliver, your uh, spell roll. This is not on your 18. This is almost like a surprise round. Um, so, um, can I just say before um, Angus gives um, Gulliver the nod to, to, to summon the spell, he'll, he'll, have got his, um, he'll have drawn his sword. Sure yeah, ready. I'm assuming that both you and yeah. uh, um, Hazra sat there in a, in a pose with his short spear ready to thrust. Yeah, okay then. So is this um, summoning, um, teleport that you're casting? This is... Um, Summon. This no, is... Um, no, this is teleport. Teleport. And I think I get a resist against it. Um, you do. Once I um, link the the thing i'm just working out it's range. evade i know what it, I'm, is it evade I know. Power, isn't it? Yeah. I know it's a summons invade because we always have the discussion 
um, yeah. how strange oh, it is. It is. Strange, yes. mm. Yeah, because it, it's almost like oh, the, it starts it's to like appear. A spear, wasn't it? Uh, be yeah. Like, he's like grabbing it. And yeah, yeah, and so it starts to appear yeah. towards it. So um, yeah, so so yeah. So do you want to roll your? Um, so this is when water starts to appear, doesn't it? So, so basically what happens is that um, Gulliver holds out his hand and a small globe of water starts to appear in it and it gets slowly, it sort of like starts off the size of a marble and gets bigger and bigger. And by the time he's finished, it's just sort of like the size of a baseball. Mm. And then and then what happens is that he, he closes his hand, that disappears and the the puddle appears where the person is going to be um teleported to but also one appears underneath the person that's teleporting that, that's so it's it. like yeah. two dimensional two dimensional thing so i suppose what happens when the frogman automatically when gulliver casts a spell the frogman all of a sudden sort of like i don't know perception wise sees that he uh, this puddle is forming in and that's when he gets the chance to, to evade to, yeah. and throw himself out of the out way of the way yeah okay then let's go for it then um so um i'm presuming that we've um when we were discussing what was happening um seven and a half minutes had passed yes for, you you you're quite easily um no longer fatigued yeah and so i want to use a point of luck to reverse my um figures for my my world taking it to a 48. okay cool um so um the um Betrachians evade just so you know is um 67 which you would probably expect from a an amphibian frog-like creature. Um, so this is my one d hundred coming off. Oh no! <laughs> How can I do that? <laughs> can you see that, Mel? Can, can you just go rub it? <laughs> do you want to know? That was so interesting because my brain oh, trachean my... character sheet was hiding the other dice. So I saw one come up at a zero and I thought, oh no, I've got something like six, which would be a critical or something like that. <laughs> so, does he does he get like a, an extra fumble? Like he's so busy trying to sort of like move out the way that he stunned. dropped his weapon. Yeah, so what was well what I'm what I'm going to say to, um to you is that um because he's actually fumbled um well it's up to you you can have a choice um Gulliver. Yeah. i'll give you either or he can either drop his spear or or his first um of the first um round as he appears to you he's quite um stunned so he can take no action um i'll on, take that one on the round that's what i was going to I'll say but that. you can have yours yeah. if you if you wish yeah, I'll take yours. Okay then. So you cast the spell and the water appears and the, the bullywog or the Betrachian um tries desperately to so he sort of goes Whoa, like that and all of a sudden it goes like that and he's sort of like and he sort of like gets sucked um into it and he appears um looking quite dazed as Gulliver sort of like swings his arm round and the water appears on the ground and he sort of like appears um, between you two. And I think that will be an appropriate moment to take our break <gasps> before anything else happens. So we're just going breath. to take a oh, quick... Um, so really, I'm just like Gulliver's part in it has gone superbly. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic you, you've um due to He's my role is part of the the plan I, I i think we have to say between us it's gone really well because my role was particularly rubbish uh, yes. yeah you know well, so, I, I disagree with that i'd say it was fortuitous <laughs> yeah because uh, remember any role that is um 96 to 100 fails in any case so anything that no happens now what. isn't really his fault mm. <laughs> yeah and just to let yeah. you know um Remember, anything 96 to 100 fails no matter what your skill, no matter what. Um, anything 99 and 100 is always a fumble, apart from if you actually have your skill over 100. 
and in which case um, it is then only 100 that actually has the fumble if that makes sense. But remember, um, some people might say, well, why should I get my um, my score past 96 if 96 to 100 is always a failure? Well, it's because of the others, um, like a hard roll or an easy roll. Those, the difficulty grade is still adapted. Okay, so, but no matter what, a roll of one to five is always a hit, no matter what. Even if it's a, a very hard roll, a zero to five is a hit and one tenth of your skill is always a critical. And then 96 to 100 is, is always a miss no matter what. OK, so we will have our um, 10 minute um, break there. So if you're watching the stream, we're going to take a quick 10 minute break to just um, do bio breaks, get something to eat and drink. And we will be back in 10. So please do not go away and come back. See you soon.
Yeah. Okay. Five, four, three, two, there seven. There we are. And you didn't drop Hazra, by the way. I did. My internet went off. I disconnected from everything. Oh, my internet went off last Sunday. Oh, oh did you? Oh, did it really? Yeah. Four, three days. We were unaware of it. Yeah. No, I was very cross. I had India oh, phoning me every day saying, we would like to... To give we want the internet back. <laughs> we are like, give an update. Okay, so yeah, everything is happening now because um, Gulliver has summoned and teleported using all his magical prowess oh, this um, Bratrachian into the arms, the awaiting swords of um, Hengis and Hazra, um, sword and spear, sorry. Um, interestingly enough, um, because the Bratakian had such a poor role, he is not allowed to actually act on the first um, round uh, at all. Um, so it means that, um, Gulliver, you have to maintain the spell, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but remember, I think you can do some actions, can't you, while maintaining a spell? I can um I can <coughs> do um I can walk and um, do a pickle dance and react and do um react certain reactive yeah, things. things yeah okay so you do have you we are coming in now hitting combat round one turn one okay so this is the start of the um battle <coughs> that we hope is going to be quick and quiet silent yes. yeah um no. but so gulliver you get to do first on 18 if you would like to do anything well, if i my i don't know what um who's next is it hasra i am yes yeah. on 18 because i mean would gulliver act slightly before hasra on the on the initiative so he would appear uh, oh yes sorry good it, it depends what your initiative bonus is before you roll the 1d10 well it doesn't really matter because no matter what, um, Gulliver is going to go first because Hazra will be holding his action back and stare uh, yeah, but right there. It's 12. To to Mine's 12. You can't actually hold, hold an Did, action. So I can't dither. You can dither, and in which case you will lose 18. And if you oh. delay, if you delay your action, oh. that means you delay it just in case you want to parry or to be react to take a reactive role later. Oh. On. So, Gulliver, what's your initiative, sir? Uh, my initiative bonus is twelve. And oh, what's Hazra's? Twelve. <laughs> Are you both twelve? Uh, for, for, for eleven. Eleven. Yeah. So, Gulliver, you you go first if there's anything that you would like to do. Well, uh, Gulliver's thing would have been to cast the spell. Okay, then. So, um, Hazra, you are up um, next. Now, just to let you know, this um, creature, of course, cannot actually... Um, he's fumbled, if you remember, so he's incapacitated oh, right. for this... For um, one turn. Yeah, which actually means that your hit, um, I think, off the top of my head, means that I automatically hit... Um, but you can um, make, f if you still do the roll... Um, because it's a or a crit. Uh, well, no, it automatically hits. It, it can't actually um, fumble because it automatically hits, but it's just whether or not it does uh, a crit, because in which case yep. you'll get more... Um, let me... Helpless... Yeah, automatic. Yeah. So just yep. roll it to see what you get to see. Whether right, so I'm assuming this this this, this um, Bay Trekking's appeared in front of me. So I've got a spit and I've got to stab it. A stab away. So here we go. Uh, no manic skill. Uh, now, so yeah, so you've actually got a crit, um, and that's why we do it. So remember, you had um, two um, specials. Now, now I do know that there was a. a I actually asked, asked, and I hope people looked at it. Oh yes, um, it was very interesting. The I sort of like said, you know, what were people's favourite specials on the Reddit, and there was a whole load of really interesting. There was um, things that came up. I just, I've completely forgotten what they were, but there was. <laughs> I must have missed the post. And... There's lots of impales and throwing. Um, yeah, so remember, you've got a crit. So you can actually engage in um, critical, um, anything that's critted. Right. My my first critical is going to be choose location, which is going to be uh, cranium. Okay. So it's going to be... Which seems to have okay. worked. For all the other ones it's killed recently, 
that's the best thing to do. So yeah. he's doing that and he's going to use Impale as his or, second crit. Or you can actually use, because it's a crit, you can no. use Bypass Armor if you wish. Mm, yes, I will use uh, Bypass Armor as well as Choose Location then, please. Okay, then. Uh, so, can I do both? Yeah, um, because... So um, and Bypass Armor. So this is going into its um, head. Um, yeah, yep. that's brilliant. So do some damage for me. Which is going to be 1d10 plus... Is it plus still plus 4 or plus 2? Does it... Add to the plus two. Um, uh, it, it increases uh, casting a spell with a dagger would it would go to one d six plus one, and um, whereas the same spell cast on a great axe would increase to two d eight plus two. So what's the normal? Um, let me just see. Um, this sure. spell. This. Uh, so I'm I'm one d eight. So I go one d ten. Increases the damage of the weapon by one dice step. So no, yeah. not the not the plus one then. Yeah. So that that's going to be eight then in that case in that location. Um, eight points of damage. Now luckily you bypassed armor, um, mm -hmm. because Thank it you. actually has two armor locations um, there. Um, so that would be eight. Um, in its head, it actually has got um, that amount. Um, uh, which is that, which will take it down to that. Okay, I need... Do you know on my new character sheet, can I just say that mm -hmm. um, I don't have any dice roll ability? So next to all my skills, all my dice roll have gone. Does that make sense? So I can't... It does. I That's... have to... I actually have to roll dice. I have it with my combat skills, but I don't have anything now next to my um, my normal dice rolls, um, hence why. And you probably notice because I don't have that dice roll, I don't have any of the the critical or standard or anything like that. I have to do it in my head. Um, Thirty seven. Um, its endurance is um, forty eight. Um, but yours is a critical, which means you still um, overpower it. So you actually whack your um, spear um, into Base its the head. Skull. Yeah, it's it's not dead, but it, you sort of like hit it very hard, and it, it crumbles um, to the floor. Uh, it looks it you you definitely sort of like um, unconscioned it. So with a free action, as I do that, I want to. Um, Hiss to Hengist, dispatch it. And yes, um, Hengist, it's your attack. It's your turn. Seeing Hester drop the, the frog, um, Hengist is just going to put it out of its misery. Okay, so roll your, um, your combat style just to see whether or not you get a crit or not. The hit will be automatic. Um, yeah, no no crit, so just one special, please. And then um, special hit location and then damage. Um, I always forget if you can use this one. Uh, this is really embarrassing. Choose yeah, so choose location, head, and it's just going to finish him off. Yep. Um, where is my weapon? I'm doing it one-handed. That was an awful roll. Um, did you take into account the blade sharp? Yeah, taking into account the blade, blade sharp, it was just a pants roll. I rolled a oh, two, right. and then I got on my one d two strength mod. I got a one. So, um, um, so that's um, is choose, choose location a crit? Um, yeah, um, if range weapons choose location is is a critical success only. I think. I think uh, when using a hand-to-hand -hand weapon, the attacker may freely select a uh, blow. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's only um, with ranged weapons that it's a... Um, um, yeah, it's only ranged weapons that it's actually um, uh, a crit. That's yeah, what I it think. Just it? On the summary table, it just says C description, which is why yeah. it was um, pausing to double check. Uh, hang on, I'll just check it. Um, I think... Da, da, da. Choose location. Do, when using a hand-to-hand -hand melee weapon, the attacker may freely select the location where the blow lands, as long as that location is with, normally within reach. If using a ranged weapon, choose location is a critical success only, unless the target is within close range and is stationary or unaware of the target. Yep, yeah, so, so that's that. Um, so how many points of damage? Three. Three. 
uh, which actually takes it to uh, minus five, um, which is the amount of points that it had in its um, head uh, at a negative value, which means that it will be um, killed. Okay. Um, it is and then Hengist dead. is going to use a free action to his um, to whisper to both Gulliver and Hazrin saying, "I'm going to move on to the pit now." Um, um, Bar to be at this point, you're you're looking into the um, cabinets, going, "Hmm, hmm," and try to figure out what what's actually um, happening well, there. Well, the, not I mm, imagine it's more like right now. Mm, mm, mm. This doesn't fit my mangled hand yet. No, I'll keep trying. <laughs> Uh, you you did drop um, connection, has a. I thought I did. Yeah, because I've just had a look and everybody's moved. Um, yeah, no, Bartleby, you were fine. It was just uh, everybody else had swapped um, places, so uh, that was it. Yeah, okay then. So yeah, um, Hengis, um, what's your um, um, this? So this will be the end of um, round one, turn one. So we're now yep. going into round. Um, one turn two, um, if people would now like to do action. So, Gulliver, you're up first. Can, um, thinking back on when the, um, when they, the, um, the henchmen came to take the prisoner, mm. can Gulliver remember anything about how the, um, the thing was locked? Was it just something? Oh no! Stuck yeah, over it, yeah was it was it? just because they had to put a ladder down, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So without the ladder, right, you can't actually. They right. can't so get all out. All it was was just sort of like a thing over it. Yeah, yeah. it's probably more to stop um, drunken Brictrachians falling yeah. in. Yeah, okay. rather than anything. Yeah. So turn two, Gulliver. What would you like to do? Um, Gulliver's going to say, try to heavy up because. The longer I have to maintain this spell, the, the more draining it's going to be for me. Hasra will, will, will whisper to um, to Gulliver and say, once we are almost there, you can release this creature and he will go back to where he was. Is that right? Yes. Yes, we'll, we'll do so. Then that will be easy on yourself. And if need be, um, you were saying before before we came into this 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 camp that you could. Um, um, just <laughs> can, can I, I, just, can I just add, the, Did you hear the tale about when yeah, it was a boy? Um, the other <laughs> thing that you have to remember, please, um, everyone. No, a free it's, action is uh, like a sentence. Yeah, but free action can be performed at any time during the combat round. So oh. all of you, um, Hengis and Hazra, you've actually used up your free action. We have, yes. Sorry for for this for this round. You'll get another one at the start of next round. Um, so yes, and um, Gulliver, are you concentrating on spell as well? Gulliver is going to maintain the spell. Yeah. Okay. Um, brilliant. So Hazra, you're next. What would you? I'm next going say? to be going out the gate and moving. Now this map thing changes. It's changed, doesn't it? Where where is it? It's now the one that looks like a, um, a circle with a ruler through it. Uh, snap to center. Yep. So I can actually get to name 4.6. So. Oh, right. Hang on a minute. Um, how are you moving to the pit? Because please I would remember. Say yeah, hang, yeah, okay. Then. So that's, I think that's a good idea. Because remember, not it's not completely empty around no. here. There are people things. So what I'm going to say is that, well, what I'm going to say is that, is that you need to roll a stealth roll Mm -hmm. not to bump into any break trachean or keep out the way so if you're successful with your um stealth roll somebody sort of like comes one comes out of a uh hush and way. you manage yeah. to get in oh. or, or whatever and then if you you're successful you only need to make one stealth roll for your movement um if you can do it walking it's just a normal stealth roll if yep. you have to run, then the stealth roll will be increased in difficulty to hard. No, in which case, reasons. what I'd like to do is move behind this hut here. So it's going to be the hut facing back there, walking. I yeah. should make it walking. Okay, then. And a stealth roll you would like. I certainly would. Is this a standard roll? A standard roll, please. Help me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so you get there. You, you notice um, as you pass um, this hut 
that's a, a drunken um, uh, Bertrachian sort of like comes out and sort of like gurgles something inside that seems to be somewhat of a, a harsh language and then sort of like stumbles back inside and you manage to quickly put yourself up against the hut uh, well, as it yeah. happens and then um, continue over and sort of like crouch down um, in combat ready stance um, when you get to uh, there. Once, once I've done that I'll go to um, Angus and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go. No, I'll yeah, make. you get there. Okay then, yeah, um, Hengis, uh, Hengis, you're up. So Hengis is going to do a, a walk where um, Hazra walked, how Hazra walked, so he's also going to move to the same place. Okay, so uh, yeah, I need your... Try and be stealthy, but Hengis is in heavy armour, so it's probably not going to work out. No. No, um, do you wish to look at all? No. no. Okay then. So you actually um, um, get to roughly the the same point, and you're sort of like crashing past and trying to move quietly. And Hazard, you see all this happen in slow motion. And as Hengis sort of like walks past, you see the flap of the hut enter again, and you just sort of think, "Oh, Hengis is going to back away like you did," but he doesn't. He's sort of like fixed on you, sort of like crouching, crouching, sort of like moving, and the Betrakian sort of like stumbles out and he stumbles out and he just sort of like looks to his um, left where he sees Hengus sort of like um, crawling past well not crawling but snook, um, sneaking past and the Betrachian sort of like looks round and then almost like um, bursts into the initiative he's not this big don't worry I'm going to shrink him down um, yeah um, so that happens on um, um, 14. And so um, the um, Betrachian comes out on 11. And so that's everybody's action finished for combat round um, to turn two. Sorry. So this is turn three of the first combat round. Um, Gulliver. Can Gulliver see him? Um, if you, you can see that... Um, Hengis has stopped the the actual hut because this is a hut here, so you can't actually see what's uh, in front of him. But you okay. So, so uh, I mean, as as far as good of us concerned, Hengis might have stopped just because Correct. he's hurt. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. And good of us will continue to hold the spell. Okay, and that's for your third turn. Um, Hazard, do you have any action points left? You muted, Hazard. I'm very muted. Um, oh. Right, so my third action point will be yes, used the answer he does. to... No, I didn't want, want to know what you're doing. I was just asking. Oh, sorry. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, hello? I do. <laughs> yeah, what would you like to do? What has we like to do? I don't know. Um, you can do I'm... that. I'm, no, I no, I, no, 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 no. I know what I would do. I, 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 know, I know what I, I would do as well, but it's whether or not Hasman knows what he would do. <laughs> and we probably I'm going to I'm gonna throw my spear at Hengis and say, Get him! <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to throw my spear at the uh, Bay Dragon and just pray that I, I, I do something. And you don't hit Hengis. Okay, roll away. Um, please remember that you're rolling into combat, so it will be a hard roll. It will indeed. Oh, my life. Fingers crossed. Um, and oh, yes, by two points. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, is shining through a black moon. Yeah, the, uh, you're good at this. Um, so um, you sort of like chuck it um, out. Um, this Braytrakian obviously doesn't, he's sort of like concentrating on um, um, Hengis, so he doesn't have an opportunity to dodge or um, deflect it or anything. So you will have one special uh, as it flies towards him. Now I'm assuming that my um, uh, blah, 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 my 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 damage will still be a D10. Your D8. your blade sharp yeah. will be on until yeah. you either die or this combat scene ends. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, I, impale. Yeah, impale's giving me my special. Okay, so one D um twenty. One D ten. No, one D twenty. Yeah, yeah. I go. Oh 1D20. no, so one D twenty. You want that first? Don't you? Yeah, Sorry, one D twenty first to see where. Fourteen. Uh, 14, um, that goes into one of his arms. Mm -hmm. Okay, and damage-wise, you want a 1d10. And you'll roll it twice. 
Because oh, I thank God for that impaling, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 how fortuitous! <laughs> <laughs> that must have been fate. Um, yeah, Ooh. so you sort of like l- lunge, uh, f- chuck your spear. It was, it was an instinct throw. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was. And you just sort of like, Phew, why like is he, that. Why is he it, clanking around? It sort of like comes out and it, it does hit him, but it sort of like glances off his rubbery um, skin. doesn't mm. penetrate his armour with that and it lands on the ground um, next to him. Um, I they, hope they've distracted him enough, though. They, they, the Betrakian at this time will use his free action and go, Rip it! like that as it looks round um hengus you're up so hengus is going to attack this um Uh, yeah Um, it will be able to use its action um to either evade or power you that's all right um yeah um that's a hit so he does a short sharp swing at him um, that's not his blow gun that he's using, by the way, so don't worry about that. Can you see it if it's in blue? You can see it if it's in blue, can't you? And you, not if it's in um, yellow. Actually, oh, it's the same skill. It's 50, um, 67 for his other one as well. So, um, yeah, so you sort of like um, whack it uh, with your um, um, your sword, but it manages to um, somehow block it or b- tap your arm out the way or duck back as it comes sweeping by. He successfully parries um, the blow. How big's your weapon? Uh, it is a medium because I'm using it one-handed. Okay, then, so I need um, half your um, damage, please, because he's unarmed, so, so he's small. Current, so currently with the blade sharp, the weapon damage is 1d10. Yeah, so just roll it. Um, so I just don't roll, know if you, no, just roll does that include one. my damage modifier as well? You just roll your damage as normal, and then That's we good. halve it. Um, five, so that'll be three points of um, damage, um, and it'll come off his, um, his, we'll say, his right arm, because that seems to be the most sensible thing for um, him to do, which means his arm will go down to that. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so that is the end of um, combat um, round one because I think everybody's out now. And we are um, going. Wasn't was that coming around three? Um, turn three, yeah. Turn three, sorry, yeah. yeah, come, yeah. yeah sorry. So come now around. it's. Was, was there something, Gulliver? How, how loud was this? Yeah, movie? so what I was going to say is that as we go into combat round turn, round two, um, two, turn one, you are now actually aware of the combat. Um, the, the combat um, is probably more like that now, so you can actually see it. Um, you actually did hear, hear the Batrachian sort of like going rivet, rivet, rivet like that. So uh, it sounded almost like some kind of a, an alarm um, going um, off. Um, so yes, Gulliver, you are up first. Okay, so Gulliver's going to um, his first action is going to be he's going to he's going to stop the um, the concentration spell. Okay, so that means that this thing will go back there, yeah, um, which is absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah, is that a free action or an action? It's a free action to. Okay, to okay. yeah. So you still have your action left then. Yeah. So his action is going to be. He's going to see in the um, the frogman. He's going to um, point at it, and you hear him say, "Evit," as he casts a um, as he cool. casts that spell on it. Uh, so is it endurance? Get an endurance. And Do you want to roll your the roll? Um, so you're standard at the moment, aren't you? Um, his endurance is um, 48. He's not very endured. Um, and he fails. So that's one level, yeah? Yeah, so... Um, so all his rolls will now be... suddenly become heavier as the, the tire spell takes over. Yeah, and now on this new character sheet that I've had to go towards, um, I don't think I have any... Uh, I remember that it's it's um, hard now. <sighs> this is because I'm not running the new sheet. Was the was the noise that it made 
almost like an alarm or um, was most it? definitely yeah right um, it was loud enough to be a yeah um so um just uh, i'm just going to put a, a red dot on that to remind me that it's hard okay then gulliver so yeah so so that's you um done um hasra you up muted again um i will you're aware of everything dash. that's happened yeah yep i'm gonna dash hearing this thing cry out i'm gonna dash at it and dive and try to tackle it to the ground cool and that's athletics i'm um, going to assume um yeah it's so you're going to um grapple it literally just throw myself at it yes yeah um so let me just check that da, 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 da. it's unarmed combat versus the combat skill of the defender okay so if the attacker wins then you've established a grapple on it but if the defender wins the grapple fades fails um i can as with evade if one of the combatants achieves more or less levels of success they may equal the number of, with um success um for um um specials etc yeah. so is it like a charge attack then no yeah. um charge well, on this. yeah charging is you take the you have to take the whole round right charging and then what happens unless the person is braced then your damage is increased to another level um, because of the the charging. So what this is is Hazra trying to grapple the thing yep. and grab hold of him in some way because he's actually um, unarmed um, at the moment. Yeah. So um, yeah. So um, you will move um, to get to there. So that will be on this on round um, turn one. So you yep. will um, get to there. Um, Hengis, you're next on um, 14. Hengis is going to try and attack this um, Petrachian again. And yeah. Try and finish him as quick mm. as possible. Cool. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, that is a, a hit. Um, let me just uh, roll my, um, my at attack. Um, he fails that. Um, yep. So you will have um, one um, one level of success. So one special. So special hit location damage. Um, so he's going to use um, bleed, and then he's going to. Um, It's so 1d20 I, for his... Yeah, I'm just, if I do that, the hit location should work. Um, it, Which one did you use? The, uh, the normal hit location oh, right. micro. Hang Does on. that not work on, for him? Or... I, I would just roll a 1d20. Yeah, no, that's fine. I can do that. We had problems with it. It was always mm. coming up. Um, 11. Yeah, okay then. So um, damage, please. Um, that's um, hit his um, chest. Um, so that'll be um, eight, eight, minus three. Uh, okay, so this is his um, um, endurance roll. Does the D, does that have a D 100 in it? Yeah, cool. Save me rolling all the time. Um, his endurance is 48. So so that fails. Um, yeah, so you actually whack him um, in his chest, I think it was. Yeah, in his chest. Um, he, he's got uh, a serious wound um, there, um, but he fails his um, endurance roll. So he, he's actually, um, he's not dead. He's actually um, unconscious um, on the floor. Brilliant. Um, and then Hengis is going to use his free action to say to Hazra, quick, the pit. Okay, uh, yeah, so that's your uh, free action done. Okay, so that um, um, that Protrachian on 11, um, nothing happens there. And we're up to combat turn um, two now. We're back up to you, Gulliver. Um, Gulliver wants to um, start to cast a spell um, but the spell that he's starting to cast, he wants to um, hold. Okay, so what spell are you casting? 
So the the spell that he's casting, I'll just link it in at the moment. He's gonna he's going to if he needs to, he's going to move towards the doors so that he can um, touch them. Do you know because this is like a grate, isn't it? Well, that is in front of the like metal. Yeah, they're they're sort of like not um, fully operational. But let me know the spell, and then I can tell you what would happen. Okay, so this is the um, that's the thing that he's going. Oh yeah, so you, gonna you're going. To, yeah, okay then. So you will. Um, how many turns will it um, take? Well, he's going to be able to do it sort of like instantaneous. Okay, then. So, but he wants to get it ready just so that... So you're holding that spell on turn two, then. Um, yeah, um, Hasra, what would you like to do? Hasra has no control. He's, he's committed to his um, his, his tackle, his, his run-up. Yeah, no, dive... yeah, no, I mean, as, as you run up, because all this is happening in literally mm. six seconds, you know, uh, all these actions, so you sort of like That's set right. off running towards it. But as you sit, get closer to it, you see um, Hasra dispatch um, just, yeah. this um, thing. So you will slow up enough um, yeah. before you get there. Um, so what would you like to do? In which case, I will go as quietly as possible. While Saint Hengist, stay here, do not move. I will free the prisoners and send them your way. You point them where to go. All right, just, yeah. I will run to. I will. I will walk. Sorry, to there. You want a stealth check? I certainly do. Ba ba ba, dear baby shark, baby shark. Yeah, and you sort of like notice that um, to here, um, as you come past, there seems to be a betrachia you know, um, urinating or something outside the hut. Um, but as you sort of like come past, you manage to stop and let him finish his whittle before he sort of like goes back uh, okay. back in yep. um, side. Um, Hengis, um, you're on 14. Hengis will do that. Okay, and um, yeah, um, so now we're um, to to this this stage. And um, Bartleby, could you please roll your um, initiative? And um, Hengis, you need to roll your stealth to see whether or not anything else um, sees you while you're um, differing out in the open. Uh, um, let's stick you on to the. Um, uh, think for that um yeah so you sort of like um stand there and luckily nothing comes out or in um at, as as you're doing that and this will turn into combat turn um three now so gulliver you are i'm assuming you're holding spell yes yeah um bartleby um you're coming next um combat round okay so i'll tell you what's happening at the end of this um round and um gulliver's um hasra yeah what would you like to do okay i want to look for this right the, the how to open the pit i want to open it if i can and free action whispers to the prisoners Shh, be quiet we are trying to get you out of here okay. one at a time. Well, hang on, because you've actually used your free action up for this round already, oh, talking okay. to um, Hengis. Um, so if you can give me a brawn roll, please, to yeah. um, slide the um, pit grid off. Yep. Um, oh. yes. Do you know what I'm going to do? Because I'm so pumped full of adrenaline after tonight's running through the dark i'm going to use a point of look to reverse that please yeah and you managed to quite adeptly move it and um, quite silently as well and you suddenly see um suddenly coming through the light you suddenly notice that there's a movement inside the pit as if everybody is moving away from your location mm -hmm. um down into the the opposite um corner um hengis um i think you have an action on turn three as well um yes hengus does um this time however hengus is gonna start moving towards the pit let's try and help let's speed the thing let's, okay let's, let's, so roll your stealth not. okay 
Uh, yeah, um, you're just walking, so that would be a standard roll. So by a skin of your teeth, literally, um, you manage to get there without um, disturbing any more um, Braetrachians. And that takes us to the end of combat round um, two. Um, anybody, um, Bartleby, um, no, Bartleby, you don't. Um, Gulliver and Hazra, you need to make um, endurance checks for me, please. Do you wish to look at Gulliver? No, I'll take the okay. fatigue. And, and Hasra, you're fine. And so that um, brings me um, to the end of the round. Okay, then. So um, at the end of the last round, Bartby, so you hear this before your action um, now. Um, Bryas um, seems to be um, muttering something. And she, she sort of like looks... She seems to be almost like fluctuating in and out of uh, of consciousness. And can you just make for me, please, a perception roll? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to hear something, but I just need to know what you hear. Oh, you oh, hear. You, you obviously oh, get yeah. very close. Um, and you feel her warm breath. Um, down your in your ear and down your neck as you get really close and she seems to be muttering um, something and she um, seems to be she she doesn't seem to be conscious she seems to be almost like um, um, illusionary I, and what's a um, um, word hallucinating yeah um, she she doesn't seem to be coherent. She's almost like um, seems to be babbling, and she, her hair head is sort of like moving to one side, and she keeps uh, mentioning yeah. things like um, the the words that you sort of like get out of her as you sort of like catch that keep coming in and out. Seems to be um, words like um, chalice, and blood, and pure. And that she seems to be almost like um, reacting to it. And then she's almost like says, no, no, no. And um, as this almost like comes to some kind of a climax, um, she sort of like um, lurches somewhat um, on the floor, on the table, wherever you have her. And as she sort of like lurches up, her hand um, distinct, um, re reactionary sort of like um, distinctive, this instinctively goes to her um her what you know she has around her neck and she sort of like touches that and um it almost like brings um it seems to calm her somewhat um as she does it you're on 19 um uh, what would you like to do um now that i'm perhaps away from from things that may have been messing with my connection with my goddess i'm going to attempt to exhort uh, left-handedly um, a healing upon her if I may yeah cool go for it uh, this is the miracle I'm trying to cast okay. on her abdomen and here is the very very lucky roll which is for once and you suddenly notice that the ringing in your ears that you had beforehand has um, dissipated and you when you sort of like once again call on the power of Amriel and um, this time you are rewarded with that familiar um, comforting um, welling up of power and security that comes through you and um, seems to um, heal as you put your hands over um, Briar's abdomen you can see the healing power um, sort of like coming through and it looks like it started to mesh together um, things that are underneath um, Gulliver, you're up. Um, Gulliver is um, holding the spell that he had is okay. ready to to cast. Cool. And uh, remember, um, you will do that as a reaction. So any time you can just say it's coming off. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to be on your um, turn. Right. Um, um, Hazra, you're up. Okay. Um... Is your ladder already on top or No, the around? ladder is literally um down your side. I would have assumed you would have seen the ladder and gone yeah. to that side. Yeah. So the the ladder is um literally sort of like um here. Right. So I will um 
I will, oh gosh, right, okay. I will lift up the cage and whisper. You to, don't need to lift up. The, you've moved the um, the grid yeah. over oh, right. to yeah, one yeah. side, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll put the ladder down and say to the prisoners quietly as I can, so they can hear. Um, we, we, we've come to rescue you as quietly as possible. Get up now. And one of them says, aren't you a little bit short to be a stormtrooper? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, make make your stealth roll for me, please. You mean old Ben? <laughs> make your stealth roll. Here we go. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, and you sort of like... You sort of like move it a bit and you see a Brotrachian sort of like walking past in between hut, um, huts and you immediately stand very still and let him go by and then or her and then slowly ease it down. And you sort of like make sure that your head is below the level of the right. um, ground before you whisper. And you notice that there's some really sort of like pale face, rather gaunt looking individuals who sort of like when they see a human face, they actually move towards you and um, start to head um, towards um, the, the ladder. Um, Hengist, you're up. Um, Hengist is going to um, hold his action in case there's any okay. defense. So you're going to delay it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, roll your stuff. Because you're out in the open, so you need to... Um, yeah, um, so you're sort of like holding um, your action there. And as you hold the action, you notice that um, something comes out of this um, hut. Uh, well, it's not something. It, it's a, a Batrachian who sort of like um, um, stumbles out um, quite sort of like um, almost like um, uh, um, drunk. And he sort of like um, sees you um, um, there and he sort of like lets out this really loud croak. The the one beforehand, if you remember, was more like a rivet, rivet, rivet. This is a, a, a definite sort of like quiet rah, 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 like that, as if he's sort of like... Um, they're doing the, 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 the alarm. He, he doesn't seem to be have any weapons on him. And at the same time, he seems to be um, somewhat um, um, staggering. And he does that on um, 11. Um, so that's his um, action um, for that. So we're back up to the top of the round. Um, this is combat turn two, Bartleby. And Bartleby, um, just make a perception roll for me, please. Can do. It's, it's going to be probably at formidable, just so you know. That's okay. Well, let's not have much hope then. I have a 29 perception. Yeah, you don't hear anything that's happening outside. Uh, that's okay. I have a plan anyways um, uh, to try and help uh, my friend Bria uh, become more alert and awake. I'd like to pray a uh, quick, quick prayer of energy and life. Yeah. Wake her up and cool. get her not on a table since she's more or less the abdomen was her main mm -hmm. uh, wound, right? Yeah, that's right. So and here's big luck. Yeah, so you you gently put your hand uh, just uh, under her neck and slowly um, caress down over her abdomen as the power of Amriel sort of like slides into her and she seems to sort of like almost like arch her back up to your the touch of your hand and uh, suddenly sort of like comes um, awake um, to see you um, sort of like um, hovering um, over her um, let's just um, stick her on uh, here Stop judging me and my religion, Hengist. Um, she she only has uh, uh, an initiative of twelve, um, but she will um, obviously. Um, uh, what you can do if you're moving with her, Bartaby, you can sacrifice your nineteen and actually state at the beginning of the round that you will move with her and sort of like tell me what you're going to do on twelve and take that as a round, unless you actually want to act um, before that. Um, yeah, so um, Gulliver, you're up. Um, Gulliver, um, not knowing what's happening, he can sort of like uh, see you, movement. You, yeah, it, well, but... yeah, you can hear this um, alarm yeah, call. Yeah. yeah, but so he's he's going to get ready to to, to cast his spell. Okay, 
that's the the, the plan is done. Okay, cool. So you're just still holding your spell there. Yeah. For, yeah. Um, Hazret, you're up. Hazret's muted. Again. And Hazret's muted again. Sorry, yes, that's right. Hazra. I'm so sorry. It's a permanent I'm state of mind. I know. I'm just in awe of your moves. Um, right, okay, so ladder's down. They're coming towards ladder. Hearing this noise, Hazra again is going to move with intent and purpose to tackle this bait trek. Yeah, okay then. So roll, roll your um, unarmed combat. Oh. He will use his last point of luck to re-roll. He will fail miserably. Yeah. Um, so you sort of like um, come towards him and you try to grab this um, Batrachian, but um, the Batrachian just sort of like almost like knocks you to one side or he might have just staggered to one side and a bit of a yeah. drunk and you sort of like mistime it and, and end up being... Um, so sort of like Probably. next to him, um, like no, you you don't go pro. Um, your, your mic's up, Rich. It's, it's... thank there you. We go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's all. Right. I was just making things up. Um, yeah, so you're dead, and yep. yeah, um, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So that that was your um, attack. Um, yep. Yeah. So um, Hengus, you up? Um, are the people starting to? Oh no, they're, moving, they're already moving towards. Um, Hengist is also going to move towards. Um... No, actually, Hengist is going to um, stay where he is, and he's going to try and encourage the the people up for, as fast as possible. Okay. Whilst keeping an eye out. Um, whilst, just... whilst keeping an eye out on the other side of the. Yeah. Um, the just just roll um, the stealth roll for me. It's more to see how lucky you're going to be rather than anything else. Uh, yeah, uh, not very lucky. He's um, no, not a stuffy person. No. Um, it's um, amazing he's done this well. Yeah, and you notice that the um, the urinating um, Bretrachian from before comes back in and sort of like flops out and you hear a bit of splash, splash um, as he comes out the thing. He seems to be carrying a spear um, he wasn't, no, he wasn't carrying a spear before. He was holding something, but it wasn't a spear. And he's actually um, out um, and he will come out um, on 11 as well. Um, um, Bartaby on um, 12, um, Briar sort of like, is sort of like taken aback um, with you and your um, slinged arm and everything. And she, she, she sort of like looks at you as you sort of like, quickly sort of like re remove your hand um from her abdomen and she says she sort of like looks at you and says and who are you and that yeah you've got a free action you can talk i'm barlaby um no i'm not the most beautiful priest to save you but, but i've been where fine. you're at <laughs> but what sorry i've been where you you were at yeah Okay then, and she seems to be just, um, uh, just. Um, do you have an influence role? I do. You should be a standard skill, I think. Uh, I probably do. Yep. Oh, I do. Well, I, you want me give I've that got a roll? Pitch, I've got this picture of battle. We stand there with thing. Does this, this cloth spell for me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, my influence. Not to be at all. Um, yeah, and she seems to be quite relaxed. Um, he sort, of, she sort of like sees the goddess in your eyes, and realizes your innocence and your um, you're not out to harm her in any way, and sort of like agrees that, you know, th this um, she's incapable hand. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're into combat turn um, three to anybody, and um, Bartleby, I don't think you do. Um, Gulliver, I think you do. Can um, can Gulliver see any of the prisoners coming out? Of they, the... they are. You, they're not actually up. They will. Okay, they will. Yeah, they will move to the ladder at the end of this round, oh. and then mm -hmm. they will start moving up at the end of next round. There'll be some of them will be coming up on top at the end of next round. Um, yeah, holding. Um, Hazard, do you have any left? I do have one. I would like to draw my scimitar, please. Okay, yeah, you're ready in your weapon. That's cool. Yep. And um, Hengis. 
does have one left and he's going to not move to engage the the frog person but he's going to move up close putting himself firmly between himself and the top of the ladder uh, sorry putting himself between the boat choking and the, the, the ladder so okay. not charge the prisoners yeah okay then. cool and that will bring us to the end of um combat round um three um which um um yeah hangus you need your role which I've failed. Okay, so you will gain um, one level of um, endurance. And we move on to um, combat round um, four. And I need to roll, let me just check my notes, 1d3 on this round. So basically, just so you know, guys, uh, I've, I've set out that for each combat round, once the alarm is set, a certain number of Bretrakians will come out uh, at various distances around that I know. Um, so I know which huts they're coming from. Um, so on this one, um, two um, arrive. One is not that big. One comes um, from there. And the other one comes from, sorry, not that one, it's this one, um, from there. And those are the two that come out. Um, so remember, this is all joined up combat, you know, so these are probably the, the ones that are most um, alert. I'm just going to um, get rid of the um, Petrachian that's unconscious and dead because we don't actually need him anymore. I uh, put a blue mark on there for my spearers, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I thought that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll get rid of this one as well because we know that that one's out of it as well. So this is combat round four, turn one. And um, Bartleby, you're up. Um, I think I'm going to take you up on that offer to hang out on, a, on Raya's turn. Um, mostly because I think okay. my intention here is since we're not aware of any problem, I would just over course of rounds, I would just be telling her that we're supposed to stay yeah. here. And, okay. So what uh, you can do for me is roll a perception check. Oh, that might help be helpful. Well, it's still formidable sweet. at this sound, but as the sound of combat gets better and more and more and more, it will slowly start to reduce. Yeah. Okay then. Um, so you're sort of like reassuring, um, Brian, she's looking into your eyes and feeling quite, um, she almost like pulls her raggedy um, tunic around her a little bit tighter and you reassure her that, you know, you're a man of the cloth and etc etc and things yes, seem to be going <laughs> yeah things seem to be going <laughs> well and um gulliver you're up on 18. um gulliver's going to continue holding holding spell okay hazra you're up you're in um, combat with this yes. thing with your scimitar out now having drawn weapon i will take the situation and i will swing at this uh bay trekking yeah okay so he's still unarmed and you do hit, although he can um, parry. Um, parry. Right, I'm going to move that dice roller because it's actually. Why is it? Why is? Where is it coming up? Oh, it's up there. I've got it. I'm going to move it down here, so I've got it. Um, he can parry. Yeah, uh, roll that. Oh, I think I've got a D100. Um, 67. Um, he's unarmed, so it's 57 that he needs. So you win and you get one. Um, yep, special is going to be a bleed. Okay. And location is going to be five. Um, that is um, his left leg. It's always the legs. And I need some damage. Uh, damage is going to be scimitar, 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 that one. So remember, it, oh yes, that doesn't have the blade sharp on. No, it doesn't, no, just standard um, so, six. So six points of damage will be four, um, which will leave him, what was it? Um, five, his left leg, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, that will leave him with, yeah. You sort of like slice across it. It, it seemed to have gone through his rubbery skin, um, but it hasn't sort of like um, made um, um, a, a hole in it or it seems to have taken um some flesh out of it but that's about it yeah free uh, action i want to just um look over my shoulder and say get them to the gates as fast as you can okay so you sort of like turn around and say get them to the gates as fast as they can uh, flee or fall flee. yeah and you, you notice that the Bretrachian in front of you sort of like looks round 
uh, as if he's trying to look for the gates. Um, uh, how, so, so Hengis, you're next. Um, Hengis is going to hold his action for a defensive action. Um, and he's still firmly planted himself between himself and the... Um, okay, so you're going to delay yeah. delay your action. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, um, uh, all the Bretrakians roll on 11. They're not on the um, order, but you, you know this. Um, so this is um, this is the attack um, at you, um, Hasra. Uh, yep. Um, 85 misses you. It's all right. It just goes um, way past you. And he tries to sort of like um, flail out with one of his flippers. Um, or, or something. Um, this Bretrakian um, gets um, to you, um, um, Hasra. Uh, sorry, Hengis. Um, just let me get my roller out. Yeah, and this um, Bretrakian um, gets to you as well. And this Bretrakian gets to here. It looks like it's either coming for you, Hazor, or, or maybe for the pit, or maybe even for your spear. And um, that is the end of um, turn um, one. So we're on to turn um, two. Bartaby, is there anything you would like to do? Um about the Hengist and Hazard and Glover will be back here shortly. Yeah, just roll your perception for me, please. Uh, it's still at um, formidable for this role. Um, yep. Did I just uh, roll an 86? Uh, yeah, you did. I'm sure you did. I'm sure it was an 86. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I just got an 86. <laughs> That's no good at all. <laughs> um, yeah, um, um, and Gulliver, you're up. Any sign of any of the prisoners coming out of the pit yet? Um, yeah, they, they've started to um, get at the end of combat round four. Um, one or two of them will be out, um, but not all of them because it's only six seconds, remember, for the whole right. uh, okay. the whole turn. Yeah. Well, Gulliver's going to hold his spell until he sees at least a few, one or two of the prisoners out. And then when he sees that, he's going to use his free action to call over to him and say, this way. Okay, then. Cool. Um, yeah, okay then. Um, Hasra, you're up. Um, again, I will take another swing at this um, by Drakian. Cool. Off you go. There we go. And uh, location. That will hit. Special. Hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on. Oh, sorry. Because I get to. Um, what do you do indeed? Um, I miss. Yeah, so you have a um, special hit location and damage. Yeah, so you got bleed from last time, if memory serves Yeah, me. that happens at the end of the round. End of the, that's right. Um, so this time, I'm going to choose location, left leg. The same leg, and, yeah. Yeah, same leg again. Um, and damage will be... That one. Three. Um, you're right. Um, so that actually two points of its armor stops the majority of that, but it does take one, which actually takes it down to a um, a, a serious um, wound. So mm -hmm. it has to roll its endurance um, or less. Um, 58. I don't think it does it because it's 48, um, which means now it's it collapses from underneath him, and mm -hmm. he's now um, prone um, on the um, floor. He's not helpless. Uh, so don't conscious is just down is collapsed uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so um, da, 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 um, and that's your action done yeah yep. and um, Hengis um, Hengis is going to turn to engage the first um, of the, um, the frog men that uh, arrived to him so okay that's, that's so let's, thing, yeah. um, let me just um, put some um, titles on these so I know which one so the top one is actually um, two. Okay. And the names, the, it's hard to kill them. And the bottom one is actually Bray Trachian three. So okay. this is going so, at two. Yeah. This Go is going it. at two. Uh, no. No, that uh, misses. Um, Bray Trachian two is actually going to roll his um, spear attack. This is 67. 
which he gets a 23 which means that he can actually gain uh, a defensive um, special I think if I'm right on that I'm just listening for Gulliver to perk up I, I don't know I, I, I think so because yeah. that, that's that's the reason that's the reason you do them yeah yeah um, so this is a defensive one, but I don't have any. Um, I don't have any criticals on it. Ooh, 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 ooh. yeah. Let's do that. Uh, I think I can actually use disarm. Um, disarm the character knocks or yanks or twists the opponent's weapon out of his hand. The opponent must make an opposed roll of his combat skill against the original roll. If the recipient of the disarm loses, his weapon is flung and e distance equal to the roll of the disarmer's damage modifier in meters. If there's no damage modifier, then the weapon drops at the disarmed person's feet. Okay, then. yeah, so you need to, my roll is 23, so you need to roll your combat um, roll as normal. Uh, you need to succeed first and then you need to get yeah so this Bretrachian tries to um, you sort of like lunge with your sword and it tries to whack your sword it tries to whack your hand to sort of like make you disarm it um, as it comes across um, but um, luckily even though it makes contact you sort of like you'll steal gauntlets and you're sort of like um, your fighting prowess um, actually, yeah, somebody's tried that trick on him before. Uh, um, yeah, actually, yeah. withstands um, it, but the second spear um, does come in as well. Oh no, sorry. Hang on. Wait, no, that's that's your attack done, isn't it? Yeah, that's my yeah. attack done. Okay, let me just see how many um, action points my little um, three. Nice. Um, so yeah, so this is the attack from the first one. Um, coming in now. So this is Betrachian um, 2 um, mm. fighting back with its attack. It's 67 is its roll it needs, um, which hits. Do you wish to parry? He probably will try and parry the first one. Yeah. Okay then, so parry away. Nope. Um, uh, yeah, so you, you actually um, fumble as this spear um, comes back um, in, in front of you. So roll your... Uh, what do we do for drop weapon? Is it brawn or endurance? Or willpower? I think willpower is the best one. <laughs> I, think, I, I think willpower for Hengis and brawn for Gulliver. Um, yeah. Wasn't it... it, it was, I have no idea. Was it... Was it brawn or was it something else? Was it um, like would athletics? It a, would it be an athletics? Oh yeah, let, let, let's have an athletics roll. Yeah, that would be cool. Don't forget to tick it. Uh, yeah, I've ticked tick my um, yeah. athletics roll then. Nope, uh, no, um, so you sort of like this time. It sort of like um, goes in and you try feebly to to parry it, uh, and the the um, the spear just sort of like catches you, and it, you're all over the place, and your sword drops. Um, to the floor um, as the, um, of course, the spear um, actually um, continues um, forward and will hit you in um, your 16, whatever that is. That's my left arm. And he, it will do, uh, let me get my um, spear out i think this is my is that my spear or my blow gun so the, the, fo the fogman attacked and hengis um, did he parry was no he no, no but he tried to parry but fumbled but it was an attack that he did the fogman the frogman yeah. attacked yeah that's that's fine i just yeah. i didn't know whether or not the, it was the one a... before yeah yeah, I Hengis didn't tried to attack. Yeah. I parried, even though it missed me, and did my special on yeah. him. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, um, right, I might. I just need to. Um, I think this is his spear, um, but I'm not too sure. I just need. I think it is his spear. Yeah, um, eight points of damage. Oh god, I can't math. Um, so that's in your sixteen. That's in my 16, yep. So I've got three points of armor, so that's five damage. Yep. Um, left. So that takes me down to zero. 
Um, zero. So you need you've got a, a serious wound there now. So okay. you need a, an endurance check for me, please. My initial attack was forty four. Um, uh, yeah. Can I use it my point, my one point of luck to try and re-roll that? Well, you can just reverse it and get thirty-nine. Yeah, I'll do that. Success. Then. Yeah. So your your arm is still in. Um, in you use your point of luck up and it whacks it. Um, so that's down to zero. So you you're able to um, now. You're only able to, if I'm right. Um, can you roll one d three? No, what was it again? It's slash, slash roll. Roll, 1d3. Oh, space. Space, 1d3. I didn't put the space in last time. Two. Two. Right, so you can only um, parry or evade for the next two turns. Okay, okay. And so that would be... Um, so what turn are we on at the moment? Turn two. Uh, two turns. So you can do... You'll be able to do three and then um one and then your your backup um so um so that was uh your i hope you guys are um keeping a tab on your action points um so that's the Bretrachian two done and it seems to have almost like disarmed you and um nearly sort of like taking you out and in comes um Bretrachian number two um three the the one um further down um, and that um, gets a uh, 53 with its spear, which is a hit. What do you wish to do? Oh, hang on. So what I did, I do, I did a, uh, an attack. Um, you, your well, the hit point, the hit point. turn oh, one, you delayed. So that's one. Um, you yeah, attack so I do one. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, so that will come into your... Um, nine. My nine is my abdomen. And that will be for a grand total of five points of damage. Uh, doesn't get through my armor. Okay, so it sort of like um, clanks um, into it. And that's combat turn two um, finished. Um, so we're up to combat turn um, three. Um, Bartleby, can you roll um, your... Um, perception now and now it's actually down to hard oh uh, yeah it's no longer oh oh yeah and you suddenly hear, hear this um these sounds of commotion in the distance it doesn't sound to be friendly um at all um gulliver um what would you like to do uh you know gulliver's actions and tool yeah okay Uh, yeah, just check Discord. Um, yeah, um, so you can see people coming up now. They're coming up at the end of this turn. Um, so you can see two or three of them. And Gulliver sort of like says, quick, over here. You you don't really know how many's in the pit. Um, roll, a, roll an insight check and I'll let you have a reasonable guess. Yeah, you 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 think two hundred and forty. Yeah, there's five million. Yeah. <laughs> so um, there's more than one, but less than five million. Yes, somewhere in between. Yeah. Um. So you, you sort of like beckon them over, and they start to run um towards you. Um, Hazra. Right, Hazra. Seen that Hengist is in trouble. This uh, this Braytrakian's on the floor, and you've got an run. and you've got another Braytrakian coming towards you. Towards me, yes. I'm going to look and see. Hengis has got no weapon. He's got two there. He's going to rush to his side. Um, you will have to evade because you are technically still in combat. Oh, the, even the, right. Okay. The Betrachian uh, is unarmed, isn't it? I'm going. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. So just it. roll your evade skill. I'll do my evade first. Yep. With no luck points left, please help me. Yes, oh, you, you oh, get out the way. Let's see what the Bretrachian does. Yep, I want to go. Oh, uh, sorry. Hang on, hang on. Oh, uh, my, my evade is um, 67. 
um, <gasps> because it's if you remember it's really good because of the fact that's right because you're, you're so, so you sort of like try to get away to and you, the betraking sort of like grabs you by the foot and <gasps> sort of like um brings you um back um so you can't get out of combat um hengis you um can't do uh, anything nope. um in um turn three and but Sorry, my, my, bra- um, my bar, where does it say barbarian on it? I'm oh, sorry, I've hit barbarian instead of very trachea. <laughs> um, what's that one? Three. Um, um, Braytrachian 3 still has uh, an action point um, left because it was Braytrachian 2 that actually used it for um, um, the successful um, parry. Um, so he will, you can actually, um, um, parry this if it hits, um, 26 does hit. I've got no actions. You've got no actions. Okay, cool. Um, so this will hit you in the 18, whatever that is. Uh, left arm again. Ooh, nice. And he will do that. 12 points of damage to it. Do you have your shield on your left arm? No. Um, he could. Um, I didn't say I had it out. So I'm no. Well, no. What I was going to say is that you could have um, passive blocked a with a free yeah. action, and yeah. then how many how many locations does it actually passively I have, block? I haven't got it on my arm. I never said I put it out. Um, equipped it. I said I draw my. I said in the gate I drew my sword, but I've not had my shield on my arm for a while. Well, you couldn't open doors because you had your shield you drawn. I, to, to be honest with you, when you were back um, at the the gate, um, when we you're readying your weapons, I would have thought that would be when, when yeah. you would put it on. But it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, yeah. 12 points of damage. Um, so that is um, minus... Yeah. Um, so he's got no point, hit points on his in his um, left arm. Um, he's only got three armor points on there, so that's nine damage. So that's what's nine. his original? What's his original? Five. Five. Um, so this is a major wound, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you first thing that you need to do for me, please, is roll your endurance roll against my initial attack, which is twenty six. Um, but 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 you actually succeed that um with the 29 because you're bigger than my 26 um which means that you don't actually um um fall unconscious um however however you are um unable to um carry on um fighting now um your only option is to actually evade and escape and we move um gulliver and hazra um, you need to make endurance rolls because we're at the end of combat round. Yeah. Um, four. Indeed. We'll just go yeah. into five. Oh, I failed mine. I failed mine. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Gulliver, do you have any luck left? Um. I didn't know whether or not you wanted to re-roll it at all. No. Okay then. Um, so this is um, Gulliver. You've got um, one d three um, prisoners um, coming um, towards you. I'm just waiting for it to. Work. Yeah. So there's there's one or two coming um, up um, out the thing coming towards you. Um, one's coming towards you. The other two are sort of like scattering um, out the way of things. Um, Bartleby, we're up with you. Right the way up at the top of the camp. Um. As a free action, I'd like to ask Bria if she can use a club or a dagger. Um, she, 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 she sort of like looks at her nails and sort of like says, I, I, I've used a, 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 a meat tenderizer, if that's any good. That's actually perfect. Um, uh, for my action, would I be able to uh, pull out the club uh, from my backpack um, and give it to her? Or would that be too yeah, no, you, see, you, you can do that. There's plenty of time for you to do that. Um, yeah, um, 18, Gulliver, uh, you're up. Um, Gulliver's going to drop the spell that he's holding and he's going to um, take off his backpack and stick it on the ground. Okay. Um, is, do you wish to do anything else? Well, his plan is to, to take the stone out 
but I don't know how many things I can, how much I can do in six seconds. Um, are you um, taking it out as in still wrapped up or are you just taking it out? No, he's putting his hands into the And wrap. grabbing it. So you, it'll probably take you, um, it'll be at the end of your next turn that you, um, so turn one, you can get the backpack um, off um because it's all around so you can get that off and then and because you'll have three turns at the end of your next turn you'll have it in your um hands to be able as, to as he does it he wants to what when he's doing it he wants to remember some of the teachings that when he first started to train with master healy and he wants to try to gather his willpower okay to... i'm going to copy something um um to you in um, Discord. Okay, so you can prepare yourself. You got it? No, no, I don't have Discord open. And yes, that would work on them. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's Gulliver done. Um, Hazra, we're down to you. Yes. Seeing this Batrachian uh, grab his leg, he's going to swing his scimitar and take that arm off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fighting talk. <laughs> Put him up. Fighting talk. <laughs> no, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's sort of like more, he's more sort of like surprised. Yeah, so he swings. He sort of swings, but at, just as the scimitar comes down, the Bretrakian sort of like suddenly releases <laughs> uh, releases the leg and sort of like grabs it around yeah. as it as it um um there. Um, Hengist, you're up. Um, Hengist is going to try and uh, he can't pick up his weapon, can he? Um, the, the, you cannot um, do, um, you are effectively um, out of um, combat. So the, that, that would be seen as, you, your choices are um, stand there yeah. or get out of there. Those He's are your, sort of like two, your two choices. He's going to try and evade. Okay then, so roll your um, evade skill for me. Um, yes, that does actually um, work. Um, but brave, hang on. Brave, 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 Sir Robin. Um, Fifty-one. You back away, but one of the Bretrakians keeps in, um, keeps sort of like coming towards you. But you manage to get out of the grasp um, of the um, the the second one. Um, Hazra, uh, Hengus, you can hear this happening behind you. Uh, you can hear um, there seems to be people coming out of this and sort of like um, running a, a, away in sort of like different directions. It doesn't mm. seem to be quite the um, organised um, escape that you were quite hoping for. Um, but people are just sort of like um, running all over the place. You do notice from where you are that some of them, there's Bretrakians coming out of huts now all over. I'm not going to put them all on. Um, but imagine that some people are running past and Bretrakians are jumping out of huts and wrapping them around, trying to wrap hold, grab hold of them. Others are just sort of like screaming and these Bretrakians are sort of like walloping um, after, after them. Um, I have um, some attacks now, I think. Um, so, um, Hazra, this is my attack on you first. This is unarmed. Oh, so this is 57 and I miss. And then this is my attack on you, Hazra, which is 60. Oh, uh, hey, sorry, yeah, sorry, Hengis, uh, which is the um, 67 one. 87 and he misses, uh, 89, sorry, and he misses as well. The other one's not into combat. Um, and therefore, we go up to the top of, um, you notice this one 
um, comes past you, um, Hasra, and grabs hold of um, what appears to be uh, a, a lad that is running out. And you notice that this one um, next to you, um, Hengis, um, a young girl sort of like comes down between you where that ladder line is. And this very trachean just sort of like turns around and grabs um, hold of her and sort of like, let's just see whether or not he, he hits because he should have a um, to hit well. Uh, I've assumed um, an arm that third um, 50 yeah and he sort of like grabs this young girl and they're sort of like screaming and, and yelling um, going um, on and we're coming up to the top of round um, top of turn two right Gulliver I'm sorry Bartleby you're first um, I, I, uh, I guess I just draw my dagger even though I know I can't fight I just hold the dagger with my left hand uh and staying Just in the, in the house, yeah? Yeah, we're, we're staying there. Okay, we're uh, right, Gulliver, um, you have this um, this thing out now, this egg out. Okay, so, so you Gulliver act, wants yeah. to... He wants to try to remember what the um, what the, the shaman was doing with it, and he seems to remember he, he was holding it above his... holding it in his, he did. Above his hands above his head. So that that's the same thing that Gulliver wants to wants to do, stepping stepping through, and as he does it, he wants to try to get things attention, but he doesn't know how. So he's just going to sort of like scream as loudly as he can. Okay, so you sort of like come through the door with this um, this marble egg um, uh, above your your head and and scream uh, uh, as loud. Um, as you can. Um, I'm going to ask you to make a willpower check um, in a minute, okay? But not now, So, but just um, so you know. Um, Hazra, um, we're up to you. Yeah. Can you do a bleed on the guy on the floor? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, by all means. Sorry. I can roll his endurance mm -hmm. um, and see. Um, and what I was more worried about as well, he's prone, isn't he? Um, yeah. That's uh, yep. that's um, yep. so he he's now um, got one level of fatigue. So he's now just um, hard. So I'll just pop um, yep. uh, my red. Thank you for that. A red dot. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What um, would you like to do? I'm going to swing at the arm that was grabbing me. OK, go for it again. Which I will rubbishly miss. Yeah, so you you sort of like um, um, <laughs> I'm flailing with my scimitar, uh, missing my spear. Yeah, so like swing out the way. Um, um, Hengus, um, what would you like to do? Um, Hengus is going to try and back away again at the moment. Job's done. Time to bug out and go home. Okay then. Um, evade roll. Um, there we go. Yeah, so you you back off, and uh, this is sixty seven. His evade, and there's sort of like the Betrachian, um sort of like keeps in close combat with you um, as it um, comes um, up, and he sort of like turns round uh, once more and sort of like levels his um, spear at you and um, thrusts um, its spear. Um, at um, you and gets uh, um, 35 <coughs> so who knows who's choking Trigger we're good. and um, there's nothing I can do for that away from the light. Um, 19 is there anything I can do with that or is because of my wound you, you're out of combat I can't do anything no. okay. so uh, 19 is where uh, head. Head. Yeah, so nine points of damage coming um, at you. How much armour do you have? I don't have any armour on my head. Um, so how many so hit points do you have? Minus three. Um, so how much, how much do you have on your head first? I have six in total. Six, okay. So I've taken nine. Yeah. So this Bretrachian raises its spear and you you see the, the almost like the gleeful look um, in its eye as it sort of like recognises that it's coming underneath your defences and you just see this spear coming straight um, for, for your head 
and you suddenly realize at that point that you've mistimed everything and it's almost like this um, point of doom coming towards you um, you need my original roll was 35 so you need to make an endurance check for me nope yeah, so it, it comes straight um, um, t towards you and it, you see it coming closer and closer and closer. And then all of a sudden you notice that the Bretrachian stops and it's sort of like its whole action stops as it's about to spear you through the head, which would give you a serious wound, which you would um, actually fall unconscious for. And all of a sudden it gets jerked back with a terrific um, um, pull. And you see this break Drake can get jump fall completely out to the air and get pulled up behind, dropping the spear and everything. And you notice that behind it um, is the, the black tendril, the eel thing is actually um, out and um, um, lurking um, out of the um, black um, orb. Um, Gulliver, willpower check, please. Oh! <laughs> you sly person! <laughs> You did it on purpose. So you, you, needed, you needed a 47 and you rolled a 47 to succeed. Oh, as a, you know, well, well, more than a need. Exactly. <laughs> if you needed a 48, you'd roll a 48. Yeah. Yeah. It's at this point, um, Hasra, that you notice that the, um, the, the, the Bretrachian on the floor almost like seems to lose concentration um, with you and you notice that the one that's just gone past you and Hengis you notice that the one that is sort of like um, grabbing the woman the all yeah. sort of like um, stop and all the Bretrachian movement around the camp um, stops and the, the, the villagers are still struggling like anything and you suddenly um, Hazra and Hengis you sort of like turn and look towards the gate and you see Gulliver's there um, holding up this marble um, egg and Hazra you can see that this black eel thing that you saw before ripping up the villagers is actually high up and has taken out um, one of these that um, was about to kill Hengis and I sort of like um, eating him sorry uh, Thank you, Uncanny Adventures, for your three months in a row sub. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you very, very, very much. Excellent. Um, yeah, um, Gulliver, um, yeah, um, you're still in control. Um, what do you wish? Gulliver you just just before you to, yeah can, can I say open. just you, your first list of actions will be your initial thoughts does that make sense so you can think back to something if you wish but that whatever you say will be how I interpret it from that point just to give you a warning so Gulliver's thinking that when when they first met the the, the frogmen that um, we tried to communicate with them um, in the speech that he knew mm. and it, it, it we um, I think it was Hengist who tried to get them to surrender um, but they 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 didn't they didn't under they didn't understand it so. It, he wants to he wants to sort of like put out the um the thoughts that he's that um they're they're part they're part of the the tribe 
Yeah, so you, you sort of like think back and you're thinking back to when um, Hengist wanted to sort of like um, communicate with them. And you're sort of like trying to think that, you know, they, they try to be part um, of the um, tribe. But before you get to that part of the tribe bit, you notice that the Braetrachians have almost like they they seem to be releasing their captors and they they all seem to be sort of like turning round and um, coming um, towards you, um, not to attack you, more in the sense of being reverent. And as they get closer, um, a lot of them sort of like start to kneel as you're sort of like stood there looking quite shocked as they come towards you holding up this egg. And they all sort of like start to almost like kneel and sort of like um, start to almost like bow um towards you and almost like start to um worship you and you can you can feel in your mind that that you don't think it's you doing this there there's something else um almost like um emanating power through you it's almost like using you as a conduit and but at the at the real back of your mind um, there's almost like this this area of darkness, this um, evil. Um, just roll insight for me. And you 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 suddenly you sort of like thinking what's on um, going on, and uh, as you sense this darkness um, in the back, you you're out the corner of your eye. You suddenly see the the huge black eel thing sort of like whirling around just quietly chomping down one of the Bratrachians and you realize that somehow um, this is involved in this somehow as well but that is something um, a lot more powerful a lot more almost like deadly um, the other thing that you can sense is excitement from within the tower and you you suddenly realize that it's probably from the um the black um eels that were in the um in the uh, the central tower they almost like uh, are excited almost in um happy excitement uh, as if something positive is going to to happen and you can feel this sort of like emotion um powering over you um yeah um, am i able to speak some other words whilst doing this um uh, depends what the words are he wants to say something um to anybody who can understand the common tongue close close by he, he wants to sort of like go guys hurry this thing's heavy Okay, um, so yeah, so um, um, Hasra, uh, Bartleby, um, you'll be up um, first. What would you like to do? Um, I'd like to ask her about her golden torque necklace, but I don't think right now is the time. Um, so I think we're just hunkering down. Okay, cool. Um, Hasra. Um, you hear seen, Gulliver say this um, hurry yeah. bit. And seeing the boat take him back away or move away from me, who's dropping my foot, I'm going to run while shouting to the two children that were there to follow me. Yes. Um, and I will run towards my spear if I can. Yeah. And hopefully look behind me and see, make sure the kids are following me. And the, the aim is to take them to Gulliver and through the gate. If we can save two. Yeah. That's what that's um, just... Right. Um, you you need to roll for me an influence check because um, mm -hmm. it's whether or not because the, the people see the entrance to this tower as that's almost a bad thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I understand this. Yeah. So yep. you, you can pick up your spear. That's not a problem. But just roll your inside your um, influence. Influence. Yep. Yeah. It's my worst possible skill, but I know I can do this. <laughs> yes. The opposite of I know I can do this. Hang on, let me put a most glorious tick in that box. Does a point of luck change that to a one? 
It would do, but if I were to look, <laughs> I often thought that. Yes. Hmm. No, it doesn't because that that would it would um, yeah, it, yeah. A, a ten changes to a one. So one, yeah, so you sort right. of like um, um, shout. Come with me if you want to live. Screw yeah. you! <laughs> and they're sort of like looking uh, around. Um, Hengus, yeah. you up? Um, I'm just moving um, you, Hazra, so I can remove your spear. Um, Come with me, children, awesome. to the prince of Anne. I'm going to ignore that. Um, Angus is, if possible, going to. Um, he wants to move to his sword to pick it up if if he can. Yeah. Um, and then, if he's still got movement left in this action, he wants to start heading towards the gate. Okay, so you you um, head towards the gate. So, um, but um, Hasra, you will have another chance of your um, influence. Um, yeah, stretch role. to get these children that we're yeah. going to leave behind if I don't get it. Yeah. 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 And so, he's, Angus is walking forward and he's got a completely glazed look over his face. He's not really, he's like stumbling a little bit every so often. often. Um, I've got no, I, I can't really do anything to in, increase this, can I? What's but your anyway, chance here? Ten. Yeah, here we go. Come on, I want these kids to survive and not leave them behind. Clearly I am. Oh, yeah, so e funny. even if you augment it with something, it's not it's going to happen. It's not going that. to happen. No, um, no I well, can't leave these kids behind. Well, no. Well, what they seem to be doing a lot more of is that they seem to be running off in different directions. And now that <laughs> Gulliver has the sort of like control, there's nobody sort of like stopping them. They're just running off um, into the um, into the surrounding areas. None of them well, are going near the huge black eel thing no. that is towering. My, my, my worry is they're going to go into the woods with the trapdoor spiders and, and well we, we'll have to see what happens so um mm. yeah so um Hasra and Hengish you can actually get through the gates if you wish or do you wish to stay outside um when you get there um Hengish is probably going to try and get through the gate and then wait on the other side of the gate I'm going to stay outside till everybody's in and then moving okay um yeah so Gulliver we're, we're down to you here mister what would you like to do Gulliver's going to say, what, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> Gulliver, if you can if you can get through the gate, I will cover you. And then have you got any way to close these gates? I mean, sadly, there are many people out there, but I hope they are running to safety. I was hoping for a little more help, but they did have run away. Gulliver, you're, you're quite um, sure that it's not you who's controlling the Bretrachians. It's the the egg that is doing that. It's not sapping your power or anything. No, but it, Gulliver's wondering whether or not if he, <coughs> he he's going to he's going to say he's going to say to um Hengist or Hasra, he's going to say to whoever he's he's going to say Get, get, get Bartleby and, and gather everybody together. We're, we're going to walk out of here. Okay. So um, what I do need you to do for me is um, a willpower check, um, Gulliver. Um, so um, Hengis and Hazra, you, I assume that you're going to follow Gulliver's orders and go and get... Um, well, I wouldn't be Gulliver on his own. Hengis was going to say to, to Hazra, or so like just mumble out loud, um, stay with Gully, I'll get Bartleby, and then he's going to, he will make his way over to Bartleby. You're not going to get off. Okay, help um, yeah. so, so what's uh, going to... Just so you know, that's where I'm using my last point of luck. Um, to, to make um, 28. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so you, you feel this um, this darkness pull at you again. And you you actually hear um, a, a voice this time um, um, in your mind. It, it's it's definitely coming from the darkness, and it seems that it's almost like the darkness as in the beast. No, the darkness in your mind oh, that right. that darkness okay. which you assume is connected to the um, beast. And it, it seems to sort of like be tugging at your thoughts as your as your soul. 
and almost like encouraging you to sort of like almost like pay attention to it and you you suddenly realize that the excitement that you um felt from inside is not it's more um trepidation it's almost like a keenness uh, as if uh, as if the creatures inside and this creature outside are almost like going to be almost like reunited um once again and you 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 just hear um a, a voice it's quite um deep and it's quite guttural um it sounds vaguely human um as it comes along but it's as if it's speaking in a foreign tongue and it's finding it hard to formulate its um words and it, it seems to get um things round the wrong way but it just seems to communicate two words um to you and it just sort of like says free me and that's just what you um hear uh, in the back of your um mind as everybody is here hasra stays with you and Henge sort of like heads back um to um get um um the the other two and to bring them i presume to this area um gulliver uh, what would you want are there to any do? um are there any of the prisoners there as well um prisoners as in anybody so did any of the prisoners do as gulliver said and sort of like head towards is it just us or is it us and say a few of the hey, prisoners good point do? yeah good point so um did you roll your influence I, was, well, well, no, uh, not, yeah, I did my influence i failed i'm waiting yeah okay so because at one point i called out over here and at least one person oh started. yes i remember you saying yes so just roll your um um influence now for me yeah so i mean once once everybody's gathered up and yeah and we we can see how many of them are actually around depending how successful you are um yeah so you have got this um four here plus the other one so you've got like five um people um with you so i'll right. just i'll just do that so you can see that you've got uh this. okay so what once once he's gonna he's gonna sort of like look over his shoulder and to to make sure that everybody's um everybody's there and he, he's gonna say so that the prisoners hear him as as well he's gonna say we're, we're gonna walk we're gonna walk straight out of here it's important that everybody keeps together and keeps as close to me as possible and i'll try to hold in this stone up as long as i can okay and, and so he's gonna, he's gonna use that as sort of like an influence to to stop the um to stop the, you know to to get the prisoners to to do okay yeah um, it's, what it's, he did. and then the plan is to is to start walking out and um heading out towards back towards a tree line yeah so um obviously the the people are with you these five people are with you and as you make your way through the camp um other people who were on the edge of sort of like escaping suddenly sort of like see that you're almost in um control um of of everything and some more sort of like um flock um round you and um briar and um bartleby together sort of like start herding some of the children together and a lot of them seeing briar there as well including um uh, briar's handmaid and sort of like they it's almost like gives them a little bit more faith um, as you start to um, move through and the Betrachians, um seem to uh, the rest of you are quite um, impressed it, it almost like seems as if Gulliver is controlling them almost like enslaving them to do his will uh, as he sort of like walks through holding up this um, marble um, egg and you sort of like get right through a um, back down here um to the um tree line um um down here so i've just moved you down to the bottom of the um thing guys and you sort of like get there and then at that point um gulliver you need to make uh, another willpower check for me 
Yeah, and at this point, you you don't hear um, it, it's 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 whisper um, anymore. It, it's it's almost like being a lot more um, aggressive, and it it seems to almost like be screaming at you, and you you know that excitement that you. Um, felt before it's a lot further away now but it's almost like um disappointment almost like um hopelessness now as if somebody's been offered something but it's been sort of like um taken uh, away from it and you suddenly see this um creature just seems to whack out um a huge um it's lunging down um towards um the nearby a nearby uh, um Bretrachian and just sort of like um hits out um straight away and sort of like um grabs it and just sort of like brings it up and it almost like turns to you Gulliver and it, it, it's almost as if you're looking right into its bulbous eyes and it seems to take this Bretrachian into its mouth and just almost like purposefully while it looks at you sort of like crunches it it could obviously swallow it whole but it just sort of like brings its mouth down and just sort of like snaps it um it in half and yet again you you hear in your head but this time it's almost like a screech and he just like screams out free me like this it, into your head uh, what would you like to do Gulliver's Gulliver's going to stop at the end of the end of the clearing and he, he's going to remember back to the to the tower with the with the pool that almost had the smaller the sort of like worm things in mm. and uh And he's he's gonna he's gonna say he's gonna turn around to the rest and he's gonna say it it, it was doing it because it was being forced to. They they have part of it. We need to reunite them. And Bartleby, make uh, an insight roll for me, please. Can do nope. Um, I have a point of luck. Could I use that to reroll? Um, yeah, by all means. Actually, I have two points, but I'll have one after this and insight. You, you sort of like, um, start to listen to what um Gulliver was saying, and you sort of like. You, it almost like seems to make sense as if the the ones in the tower um were sort of like um almost like it's young almost like it's um offspring that was somehow have been siphoned off um through the from the pool and sort of like almost like held captive um it in the um in the tower and obviously this and Gulliver you get the same sort of like inkling now that obviously this beast can't actually um get to them it's almost as if they're trapped there and it's it's been separated and like you said Gulliver it was almost as if it was being forced to it was being coerced to actually do this um just as uh you you mentioned anybody can act i'm not helping those evil evil eels what would you like to do anyone can act good of us gonna say i, I don't think 
I don't think we're going to get out of here. I'm going to make sure that the um, the escapees are all fine, and I'm going to hurdle them um, in deeper into the woods because where our job's done, Bria and the prisoners are going back to the castle. As simple as that. If these people want to deal with this thing in their own time, then Hazra is quite happy with that. But he's been left out to dry twice now, and he's is rather save the people. Take Bartleby, Bria, and the prisoners. Oh, well, yeah, the, um, Bar Bartleby can probably decide for himself what he wants. Oh, I'm, I'm agreeing. It has got me, got me classed right. I'm, okay, I'm, so, um, so um, Hasra and Bartleby, you're heading off back um, into the the woods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yes. So, um, um, Hengis, uh, what are you going to be doing? Hengis will pause for a moment and say to Gully we should leave it as it is we can't loose that evil onto the world without um, if it's acting if it's not acting on its own will at the moment we don't want it acting on its will and then he was sort of like half pause waiting for Gully to, to follow uh, are you heading off then hangers is that what you're waiting he, he for? will be but he's he's waiting for gulliver at the moment it's like casting a glance over over his shoulder to see everyone else walking off right so gulliver what it looks like is your party sort of like you're stood here holding this um egg um in control of the um Bratrakians. and i think there was about 50 of them wanting to kill them was there about uh, uh, yeah and yeah. sort of like this big um black thing um here and um you notice that bartleby and hazra and hengis sort of like um turn around and sort of like start to um hengis hasn't yet he, he but, will yeah be. you he started off and you were looking round um but you you definitely made the action to to head off um rather than to stay um they yeah and they sort of like um and start to um head off and you you notice that um hasra and bartaby you start to move the people around but as you sort of like start to move um, a briar um, uh, around both of you, so she's almost like um, looks at you almost like we're in um, with disdain and is sort of like um, it says, are you going to leave your friend? What do you mean, leave my friend? Because I turned Jamaican. He turns, he turns um, <laughs> as sure as you say, leave your friend, she sort of like turns to all of you in one um, fair swoop and sort of like um, uh, addresses you all um, um, uh, as you sort of like, Hengis is sort of like start to move around, turn around, and Bartaby and Hasra sort of like st started off, and she turns around to you and she just. She just sort of like um, looks at you and you see this look of total um, bafflement and disdain. And you you hear um, um, uh, her, her words and she's she's quite um, quiet and she's not hysterical at all. She's quite controlled and um, she just sort of like says, now I know the sort of people that my father has warned me about and she almost like looks at the three of you and then um makes um um her her step and just out of interest um her handmaiden goes to um go with her and she sort of like turns to her and says no leave lead the people back go with these others and we will deal with this. And she still got your um, club, I think, Bartleby, that, that you gave her. And she sort of like grabs hold of it um, a, a little bit um, stronger uh, as she sort of like um, comes um, up um, to you, Gulliver. So Bartleby and Hazra, you're sort of like herding off um, the things. And Hengus, you you notice that um, Gulliver um, isn't um, coming um, at all. 
and Gulliver and Briar seem to be having um, some kind of um, um, conversation um, be between um, them. And... Gulliver's, Gulliver's sort of like thing that he wants to be sort of like saying it would be that he, he needs he needs Briar to go into the tower and inside she'll find like a, a water thing and to push it carefully to the to the edge so that it falls down into the in into the, the tar that's that's on the edge of it yeah and she sort of like listens to you really intently and you can see that she she's almost like shaking with fear um, but she almost like senses that the, there's more at work here, something that's more um, important. And you notice that as she marches off, um, well, she sort of like um, hesitantly starts to move through the camp. And you notice that although Hengis and Hazard and Bartleby have got some of the people with her, with them they almost like have the frail or the young and there, there's a couple of guys that seem to be sort of like one seems to be almost like teenagerish, um, but quite burly almost like like a farm hand and another one that almost like seems to be a, almost like a middle-aged man and they sort of like as they're sort of like being herded away they sort of like see what's happening and they sort of like push away their sort of like the the young and the frail and the women and they actually come back and join Briar as they sort of like start to um, make their way um, across the um, um, hut and you feel this darkness tugging at your mind uh, uh, Gulliver as if it's sensing that something um, positive is happening and it almost like casually sort of like chews on this Bretrachian as it sort of like follows um, Briar and the farmhands um, across the camp and although some of the um, um, Bretrachians sort of like look at them they immediately you sort of like feel the the egg almost like throb with, with power and they immediately sort of like turn back to it as if they're trying to break away from the power of it but it then immediately grabs it back and you realize how much um power um this egg is actually controlling and the men and the um, briar sort of like head back and after a while you you see them um almost like half pushing half pulling half carrying this bowl that you saw before with this black liquid in and you can see the eels sort of like writhing around um, but they don't seem to be attacking them at all if anything they seem to be um pulsing with some sort of um almost like excitement and they they don't actually get um, to the actual um, lake, the Black Lake. They don't even manage to tip it over. And as it gets closer, all of a sudden, this black morphous liquid almost like um, jumps and leaps um, into the um, into the pool. And they, you see sort of like ripples of them writhing their way. And you sort of like... Um, sense this wonderful um this joyous moment when um to when almost like that moment when um a mother sort of like embraces its young once again from being apart for a huge amount of um time and as you're sort of like stood there uh, alone Gulliver Brian the two farmhands um come up um to you and they they sort of like turn to you and they sort of like look up and you can see the from the base of this giant black eel you can see um these smaller eels almost like wrapping itself round and this blackness in, in your head that was almost like threatening to take control of you almost like um subsides somewhat and almost like retreats slightly and you just um you hear no words 
coming from it but you just feel this sense of relief and gratitude and almost like wonderful joy um, that could only be um, when you know a mother is reunited with its uh, young and as you look at this scene happening you you sense that there's almost like a shift in the water and uh, as if the only thing that you can relate to um, Gulliver is the um, sense of um, almost like a portal when you're you've you've um, um, have you learned the portal spell no no when you've seen the other blue wizards sort of like opening portals it seems almost like that um, there seems to be like a flood of magic and power from the lake and what it seems to do is almost like suck um, the blackness um, through and all of a sudden the um, the whole lake um, seems to shimmer for a set and the blackness slowly retreats and as it starts off really slowly then all of a sudden it almost like speeds up and then in a one final moment there's a sort of like sound and the the wash of gratitude um sort of like flows um over you and you notice that the the swamp slowly returns to like um uh, uh, uh like a uh, murky water and briar um comes up to you and puts her hand on your shoulder and says you did the right thing you know and she says i think it's time to go home and we will leave it there for this week thank you very much i hope you enjoy tonight's um production of um production uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah production of um mithras um yes yeah, so the party have been um oh slightly beaten up and it'll be interesting what um happens in the um in the next adventure when we come back hopefully next week at the same time which is at seven o'clock um gmt time here on my channel um does anybody have any announcements or anything like that to make yeah yes um I'm Mr. Pickles from the Pickle Show, and I'm going to be playing a game in about an hour or so. Uh, I will I'll... just give you a shout out. Will you be dancing? Pickle dance. Uh, I the... won't, but I'm. Do it. Do it. Which Sorry, game are you playing, Mr. Pickles? I'll be playing Pickle Starbound. Pickle. Be going to space. <gasps> Wrath Inspired is going to be there. Other people are yeah. going to be there, maybe, and we're all going to play with blocks in space. Oh, fantastic. So I don't know the game spell Starbound, so it's well worth going out and giving him uh, a You check. also play Terraria. Uh, it's basically Terraria, but yeah. Terraria is awesome. I don't understand that. I don't. What's it? Imadios has said, announcement, question mark, Forson, and then there's a CD. I don't know what that means. Anybody know what that means? No, Imadio might tell no. me in a minute. Wave, uh, wave, wave nicely. Yeah, uh, I'll give a shout out for Imadio uh, as as well uh, because he's a great streamer. He's a great um, berserker, zerker, berserker! Uh, with his twin axes on um, his channel. There, playing Black Desert Online. So oh. yes, yeah, so thank you very much for coming along and joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, well I did, and I hope that you'll come back and have a watch next week as well. Please remember that if you want to see how the rules work, then you can go across to my YouTube channel, and there are a series of videos there. Um, explaining how we actually play the game um, and I've gone and explained it to them so go along and subscribe and have a look at them there are more coming there's um, 
spell casting for each of the different disciplines to come out yet plus character generation so well and also how i make adventures that somebody has asked for so do go along there and have a look if you're interested in any of the actual um campaign that we actually work on um playing then all the information about the orders and um, the priests and everything like that the thesis uh over on my web page just go along to inwills.co.uk and look at the menu that is labeled um role playing games you can see the cast of these good people here and also the different orders and what they're working towards etc etc i will be back tomorrow at two o'clock gmt time when i will be playing some more elder scrolls online i'm battling through my stam sock to try to make him actually viable in player versus player so it's worth coming along just for the giggle until then i would like to say to each and every one of you please remember to be who you are and say what you think because the people who mind don't matter and the people who matter don't mind. Have fun, everyone, and I'll catch you all later. And until then, happy rolling your percentile dice. Have fun, guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs> and we are.